Good afternoon, everybody. I'm DJ Stone along with Jason Rockhold and Dakota Horn. It's a special edition of our pregame show brought to you by Chuck Taylor, State Park Insurance and Financial Services in Canton for Mutual Funds, Life, and Health Insurance Culture at 647-8544. We are on the field in Farmington, right outside the south end zone for our pregame show. Kind of ESPN style today. And Dakota and Jason, welcome aboard. Looking forward to a good one. It's going to be a blast. Teams are 9-1. and one. They have met already this year at Prairie Land Conference Foes. Farmington upended Elmwood, not off, giving them their first regular season loss in three seasons. How is that going to game, do you think, to go to Horn? Well, one big thing is Lane Wyatt is going to be back for the Elmwood. I can sit out. But how it boils out is everybody's healthy on the side, and I've been calling this the makeshift Prairie Conference camp last week for the semifinal, and this is a big one, and I'll see if that added going to help the Horn and John Asplund will have the call of the game for you this afternoon up from the uh, excuse me, Jason Rockwell and I <laughs> here on the field before the game for our pregame and now we're going to get to see both teams. What do you think today's game is going to bring us? I think today's game, believe it or not, is going to be a lot more high score than anybody predicts. Team 14 was final in week 7, I believe, this year, and I think you can throw that completely out the way. You're not playing to move on and continue your season. You know, winter, I think you put week seven completely out of the picture. Teams are fully healthy. Okay. All right. Now that we've given you our opinion, the opinions of the coaches coming up next, we'll take this two minute time out. When we come back, we'll chat with Elmwood Brimfield coach Todd Horns heading up to the booth to go have a great call. We'll speak with you later. That's on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Are warming up right now. And I'm uh, BJ Stone, I'm Jason Rockwell, I'm Brickfield Road, and head coach Todd Hollis. Coach, congratulations well on another wonderful regular season. This program uh, doesn't uh, have to take time to rebuild anymore. You just reload every year, and that's in your staff. Well, we're, uh, we're pretty fortunate. A lot of kids that are putting in a lot of time up in the offseason in our numbers. And, you know, the thing that we've had some injuries this year, but uh, next man up, next man ready to go.
and that, uh, you know, when you have somebody like that in the position, you have to do a little learning. Our guys are willing to do the teaching instead of, you know, jumping on somebody. They're taking every time to make the guys ready to go. Hey, you you're on your third backup, or your third right back. Your offense gets to the line so quickly. How much thought do you take out of the offensive line? If they're looking at a wrist band and bang, they're gone, or just a second. Well, uh, probably the, the biggest thing is not our game is how many plays we can impact. You know, we have so many reps in practice. And then, you know, we're averaging 70 plays a game. You know, back when we were running, uh, slowing things down, we did maybe 35. So we're going to play in for every game. And so by the time you're in the season, your kids have a lot, a lot of reps. And then they're able to yeah. We're talking with Elmwood, uh, Brookfield, and Alex Kutcher. Uh, loss this year was to this Farmington Farmer. 14 was the score. A couple of us believe it's going to be a higher scoring affair today. What do you see? Well, I, I, we came out a little bit in the last. We came out for the first quarter. And we can't allow a team that has a good defense with uh, Warren like they do to get up on you. And it's fine. Um, yeah, they, they're up to any team. Um, you know, I don't know. I, we see each other so much uh, through film and, and playing each other levels and all that, kind of tell each other. I would be terribly high scoring. I think it's going to be more of a slug test. And uh, probably whoever breaks the big one is probably one. And, and that's my next question. Keys to the game. Yeah, it's uh, over. Here and there. Uh, defense, you know, the defense back. Maybe on read or defense or something like that. Um, yeah, and then, you know, who knows? If the wind is better than the game. Well, I wish you the best of luck today. You should have a good crowd support. Uh, what they call the visitor side of the period of the field here at Target. Uh, one final question. How much is the wind going to play a factor in throwing the ball more this year? Well, you know, it's kind of side wind, so it might be an issue. Uh, but uh, the shorter stuff, I don't think it's uh, going to be any different. All right. Best of luck. We really appreciate you taking time for the Bob, thank you. Good luck today. Thanks. That is almost the coach and head coach, Todd Hollis, one of the great class acts of Central High School football. He is just marvelous. Old school. He's out here in a shirt tie and a coat, and he's back to the old NFL style coach. He's out of the shirt tie. We'll take a one minute time off. Again, the chat with Farmer from Farmer's Head Coach Casey Martin. That's on tape. It's back to the studio. That's coming up next. In our free game coverage, it's the Chuck Taylor State Farm Insurance of Natural Free Game Show. Mutual Fund. That's 647 8544. Next up, interview with Coach Casey Martin in 60 seconds on C. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yonts, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V. Your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning. Everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. A little more size in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, by the case gags, who's champagne, he's at that all state last year, first team linebacker. Um, he, but he's good as a running back. He has on the 1,400 yards rushing for the season. He's a, you know, six, four and a half, 250 pounds. And I mean, he runs that way too. Uh, the thing I think that surprises people when they see him, he's on his feet. He has great footwork. Jetson has over 600 yards a year. Um, Max Blanca, uh, I think he's now over 400, over 500.
500 yards rushing on the earth. And then you have Cooper Elam. So we have uh, three running backs to rotate in and out. Of. And, uh, you know, we feel like all of them are, are good running backs, and, and we don't hesitate at all to give them the ball. And then quarterback-wise, uh, Noah Walker has over 600 yards rushing and over 500 yards passing. You know, he, he's a good he's a tough runner. He runs hard. Um, you know, and, and he's been it's good having him throw the ball, too. I mean, I feel confident with him running or throwing, which is nice to have. And, and for sure, your quarterback, you moved from uh, last year to quarterback, and I, I definitely think it's made our team. Well, and you can see the development in the season has gone along. Yeah, I've been very, very pleased with him. I mean, he's done a good You know, um, the kids respect him. He carries himself well. And, you know, like all great athletes, that, that are a bottom that, you know, he can do whatever it needs to be done to win. And, and uh, you know, I think that a big difference in our team this year. I'm very proud of Noah. And, and you know, the fact that he's a dual threat quarterback, I think, uh, is very important, too. I mean, if anybody's seen him run, they see that, you know, everybody fears him when he has the ball. <laughs> Especially going around the edge. Absolutely. They met in the, the D-backs, you know, when they back and quarterback what he did. Well, when we talk about back, cliche, but folks, it's really not. This game is going to be won. How do you, uh, regular season rivalry, it's a conference foe, but how do you scheme for a playoff game against a team like uh, Elmer Brinkfield? You know, I think going into it, we both pretty much know each other every year anyway. I mean, it, it creates some, you know, you have to, you have to really look at, at the fine details of um, But playing in the playoffs twice a year adds that extra element. I think the reason being is you now have an evaluation of the personnel on the field. You know, when you play them from one year to the next, you think you have an idea, but some kids get stronger, some kids get faster, some kids get tougher. What are the new kids like? Well, now we've played them and they've played us. And you know the personnel on the field. You know who's fast, you know, you know who's physical. And, and I think, you know, as a coach, it, it makes you really have that game plan on what to, what to do. And also, not, you know, to not be you were the first game, there's going to be some things you did that they're going to try to take away from you so that you have something else and be successful. It actually is a lot of fun, isn't it, this time of year, just to be part of it? Charles and I said, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. You know, with that, we have a lot of respect for him. But the great thing about this is both teams are going to get to experience a great environment, a great crowd, and one of us is going on to the fourth final. And I mean, this is exciting. Where everybody understands the magnitude of this game, and that somebody at the game they're going to get state hardware. That's a big deal. All right, back to the burn. I'm going at it today. The owner of the Brentwood Trojan visiting farmers to battle the farmers. Coach Casey Martin, thanks for taking time out with us. More of the pregame show. On CD Country 1.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. 
The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor, leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Offensively for Elmwood Brimfield, they've scored 43 points a game, only allowed nine a game. Clarkson has scored 38 per game and allowed 14 per game. So you look at them, they're similar. Elmwood Brimfield had a couple of easier games for DPC into their regular season schedule. Recapping last week, uh, the first round, Farmington rolled over 45 to 6.
Bennett of Bloomington, line judge Keith Brody of Bahamut, and back judge Alan Dodd of Payne. So all of them about a two-hour drive from the east side of the state. Once again, it's John Asplund up in the booth. We had our free game show brought to you by Chuck Taylor State Farm Insurance and Financial Services in Canton for mutual funds, life, and health insurance called Chuck at 647-854. So, Elmwood Brimfield gets the ball first, John. Taking a quick look at the Elmwood Brimfield offense in the backfield. Donovan McCoy running back. Kyle Cotton on the end. Nick McCormick calling the plays behind center. Lane Wyatt, again, back, John. So that in the back of your mind did not play weak against his farmer squad. Taking Solomon in the backfield and Grant Stevens on the other end. And your line is Brian Gillis, Sam Warner, Dylan Sims, Aaron Novak, and John Wilbur. Defense farmers. You've got Jake Jepson, Noah Walker, and then on the line you've got Alex Higgs, Kyle Harmon, Joey Boggs, Randy Tran, and Brendan Simpson. Kyle Harmon, Cody Jepson, the case tags, and that line you wrap up the secondary for the farmers and farmers. So the farmers will kick off from right, left, from south to north. Should be a great ball game. Come on, buckle your seatbelts, and we're on round two of the 2 AA playoff. Yeah, this is uh, what is very electric atmosphere. We see the weather's ideal. Uh, this is just going to, uh, I anticipate this is a fantastic game here today. Two quality teams. Still 20 seconds on the scoreboard. The officials, they're going to start. And yeah, they're going to wave yeah, that they're off. They're going to wave that off. What happened? You have 18 seconds still on the scoreboard for the free game, and Farmington was so pumped up and ready to go, they just took it off. I don't think they ever received a signal from the officials. It was okay. Yeah, that's uh, something you can't do. Obviously, you got that the clock starting. So, um, so now you know, yeah, you got you got some very excited young men down there that <laughs> want to get this game going. So, uh, a little jitters. Can't blame them for that. So, uh, we'll get started here now. <laughs> a little anticlimactic now. But funny. A side note, Nick James is kicking off for the Farmers. It did Luke Stanford all the way through the season, except for last week's game, and he kicks the ball on the ground. Very simple. It gets it about a five-yard hop, and then it just, there it is, a hop, big hop at the 40-yard line, and the Elmer Grimfield Trojans are going to take over right there at the 40. He catches at the 40 and rolls through, and I believe that was Vanya on the tackle. That was Thomas for Elmer Grimfield. He was very fortunate as he went to catch that ball. He took his eye off it for a second and looked at the young man who's about ready to hit him, and he bobbled it just ever so slightly. Very fortunate for Elwin Grimfield. They still have the ball. So at the 40-yard line, field position is something that we talked about for the Farmer squad. They get up the big plays. If their defense can capitalize on the, the quick stop, that will be a key. And Elmwood Grimfield, they come right at you very fast. McCormick rolls out. He gets the fake, and he hands it off the left side, and that is Wyatt right up the middle. Once again, you see McCormick, like I said many times the first time these two teams played, he carries out his face so well that the defense is going to have to respect that rule. The so line gets four yards on the carry. They come right to the line. Right up yet again. And I believe that's Wyatt the same through. Basically the same play. You see twice, but it's working effectively. They've got a third and very, very manageable, about one and a half, maybe two yards for the first down right at midfield. It off a little bit. Ball the 48-yard line, 11-14 left here in the first quarter. Thanks for tuning in. The Field Trojan and the Farmington Farmers. A quick rugby start right off the field. spot it. It looks like the official here on our side is, is going to give it a pretty favorable spot Springfield, although we're still not sure. Well, they're just going to say first down. Ballenberger with the carry, and like you said, John, a very favorable position. Because when he comes up, he he's leaning forward for about a yard. But it's going to be a first down. They don't even bring up the chain. First down, at the 49-yard line. Three carries and a first down. And that was McCoy this time. Uh, basically, picked up from the left tailback spot. Uh, nothing fancy yet. Haven't seen them try to bust outside. You know they're going to. They're getting everybody sucked in. So Walker on the tackle for the farmer. Second and five. It's going to be a pitch to the left side. Welker wraps him up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a short. Nothing going there. The Farmington defense got a little penetration that time and uh, enabled the linebacker to make a clean tackle after a short game. 
10 15 left here in the first quarter. The coach checking in with Jason Rockhold down on the field here momentarily. Third and five coming up for the Trojan, pardon me. Coming up for the farm. Can we hand off Wyatt Scott? He stood up. McKay Staggs is in on the tackle. The ball looks like the ball it got out. There's no still from the official. Yeah, the official standing right there. And it's going to be fourth down coming up. Coming up. Ball spotted at the 42-yard line in Farmer's territory. They converted on third down. And now they're going for it on fourth. The Farmer's still in the box. Three men in the backfield. It's going to be up to Wyatt. He goes left side. I don't believe he got it. I, I don't see how there's any way they can spot that word. First down. He's running right up the 40-yard line, taking it to about the 39. Yeah, he's to take care of it. Sonny Vizioni on the carry. And it's going to be short of the first down. The Farmers force the turn on down. Well, that's, uh, that's not really what the Farmers have wanted. But Elwood Brimfield knows that they can move the ball. So I uh, wouldn't say that any, any momentum has swung to either side at this point. The Farmers have to feel good now having the ball. We'd love to join Jason down on the field, but these two offenses move so quickly that there's not even a to step away. First and 10. 40 yard line. It's going to be a run to the R side as McKay Jack He's wrapped up in the backfield. Grady Case made a spectacular tackle there. If he doesn't make that tackle, you could see 10 yards. He lowered his shoulder and got He's up about 50 pounds to him, and I yeah. credit Case on that for coming up. Putting his nose in there. Nine minutes left on the clock here in the first quarter. Farmer has the ball for the first time. The fake pitch, it goes to Jepson. Tries to weave his way through, and he's not for no game. Uh, I'm with Griffin. The defensive line looks very stout right now. There's nothing moving there. There's no foot forward on the part of Farmer. Uh, that's going to be tough for them if this way can go all day. Marlott got some good penetration, and that brings up third and ten for this Farmer's offense. One man wide for us in that I believe that's Colton Evans. The line he goes in motion to the far sideline. Welker, he looks to pass towards the far sideline. He rolls to the right. He's got one man behind him. He's gonna tuck it in and roll it for about three yards. Short of the first down. Well with the wind blowing the way it is, it's gonna be very difficult for Farmer and Elmore Grimfield, but particularly Farmer to get the ball today. Uh they gonna hurt that effort. 8-17 right here in the first quarter. It looks like McKay's back to the punt with fourth and six coming up. And with Winfield standing at the 20-yard line, and that's the murder that's back. A beautiful punt by Gag. Reception at the 20 yards. Jumps in there for the tackle and wraps up and takes it for about 10 yards of the 30. A lot of punts by Farmington this year, and McKay Skagg, that was probably the best punt he's had all year. Nice spiral going from uh, right to left, probably about a 40-yard punt. Jason, real quickly, it looks like we a break here. We'll send it down to you. Uh, what do you see on those first two possessions offensively for Elmwood Brookfield and the Farmers? Well, especially for the Elmwood Brookfield Trojans, number 62 and number 72, Marlott and Novak. They change sides of the line, and Elmwood Brinkfield runs over top of them each play so far. There you go. Thanks a lot, Jason. First and ten coming up. They penetrate by the farmers. McCormick kicks it off, and then out of the hands of the extended receiver, Hopkins. That's the same pass that Elmwood Brinkfield had a lot of success with last time they played. I don't know where that. It's uh, basically a two-layer route where you have one receiver that's running an out route at about three yards, and another at about ten, and uh, just uh, uh, didn't complete the pass. He was open was on the defensive side of that possession. Second and ten, the incomplete pass. Right up the middle goes absolutely nowhere. And John, we talked about it in the regular season game. McCormick is probably one of the best fake quarterbacks. He rolls out. You think he's got the ball? Well, to be honest with you, obviously they know what they're doing. They have a lot of success. I'm surprised he doesn't keep it more. Uh, because last time, I'm not sure he ever kept it. But he carries the fake out like he has it every time. And now with third and a long nine coming up, this setup, the old 15-yard running back standing back at the 20-yard line. It's a pick back to him, and he can't get to the 30 on a short loss. Look at that one, John. Well, they ran that same formation last year, 
uh, with different running backs back there, and they have some success with it, um, where the, the tailback can get uh, some vision. He can see some holes, and he gets his choice where to go. That time, there was no way to go, yeah. because Farmington had a lot of penetration. He saw Joseph was there, stepping it out from the very beginning, and they filled it up and went right at him. Now a first punt for the Trojans. Good snap. Low line drive kick, bounces at the 43, into the hands of the line at the 30. He fakes it to Welker. He's going to run towards the... Oh, there's a clip. Yep. There was absolutely a clip. And he pushed out at the 45-yard line on the Trojan side of the 50. Yeah, that's a huge penalty because that clip was about 10 to 15 yards from where the action was. Uh, you hate to see that as a coach for Farmington because that he didn't need to do it. And uh, you're going to hear a lot of Farmington fans moan here in a second say, no, that wasn't a clip. It was a clip. And, uh, and uh, that's going to push them back to about the 20 yards. Line. So we're going to wait for the official word. And we've got some signals of legal blocks in the back. And that's exactly what it's going to be, John. You saw that one from the, the get-go. Yeah. Well, I guess I should be totally critical of Farmington fans on that. I said I'd hear a moan. I think they all thought, too, because <laughs> you haven't heard anybody say anything. So, now the ball will be spotted, and let's see here, John, that's going to be at about the 18-yard line. Yep. So, worst field position to start any of the drives so far. That's two by Elmwood Brimfield, and this is the second opportunity for the Farmers. Well, and this is about a 35-yard penalty, so this is really tough. Here we go. Welker under center. No men in the backfield. Actually, tags back to hide behind him. Hard for him to hide. And that's going to be a run up to the middle, actually to the side to find the end for a short game. Six, once again, there's, there's not much you're, you're going to be supported by with and They're going to give the, the ball to Skaggs um, all year long. He, he finds more success the longer the game goes on. Typically, although the last time these two teams played, he was very successful early and then later on with not much success at all. Maybe it'll be the opposite today. Second and eight coming up for the Farmers. Well, grabs it, hands it off to the man in motion to the right side. That's the line in Gallup to the 30 yard line for the first down. Once again, that's the fake to gag, get everybody going. And uh, Bologna found some running room off the right side, tied it back up towards the middle. And uh, if not for the two-string tackle of one of the uh, Elmwood Grimsville defenders, I couldn't see who it was. He might have been gone. That was the old Jerry Sanders Oklahoma State running. Yeah. Take a couple of defenders with you. First and ten, the first conversion by the farmers. Jefferson's going to come towards us in the booth. And he falls down, but he does scamper for two. Well, and then Unfortunately for Farmington, he had a lot of running room and he had a blocker in front of him. If he had not slipped, he could have found maybe another first down. Second and nine coming up for the Farmers. 5.49 left here in the first quarter, and it's a nothing-nothing ball game. So if you are looking for a high-powered shootout offensively, you're tuned to the wrong station. So it's going to be a defensive showdown so far. There's still plenty of football left. Welker, hands off. It's going to be the right side again. Who's that Bologna? He's at the 50. He's got three minutes. Behind him, he's at the third eight. He's finally taken down at the 20-yard line. Falls in to the long jump set. And who is that that takes him down? 86, Colin Reinecker. That's the same play we saw last time. Uh, take to, to Skag to give to Bologna. Once again, he cut up the middle, found a, uh, a lot of room on the opposite side of the formation. Uh, so he ran about another 40 yards across the field in addition all the way down. Great play for Farmington. Bop that at the 23-yard line, and the Farmers are knocking at the door of the score. That's going to be Elam. He's on the right side. He cuts it just inside the right end for a short game. Well, that's basically the same play as last time, just Elam come in for Bologna. Uh, we have three wing backs you'll see Farmington play with. Uh, you know, Jetson and Bologna and Elam all are in there a lot. Uh, basically the same play as last time. Now, the same thing happened in the regular season game. Farmington scored first, and then the Elmo Brimfield Trojan defense never looked the same. Skag goes right side, and he gets nothing. You can't fault Elmwood Brimfield for absolutely focusing on McKay Skag. He's not finding much running room right now, and, and if I'm Elmwood, I'm doing the exact same thing they're doing. You have to focus on number 20 for Farmington, because if he gets going, the, the Farmington offense will take off. Thomas Bowers, the linebacker for Elmwood Brimfield, he came across the field to stop that one. He came from the, the near hash and stopped in the far hash. Lots of motion by the Farmers. Going to go left side. Jepson makes two tackles and runs over Bowers. Jepson looked like he was going to lose about two yards on that play as he had two Elmwood Brimfield defenders ready to tackle him. He stutter stepped, jumped over one, and 
has made it down to the 11 yard line, it looks like. Good enough for a first down, I think. And well, now they've moved it back to the 13. Okay, we're going to have an official timeout, the perfect time to set it down to Jason to see what we've got. He's got, he's standing at about the 15 yard line. Jason, where you see the ball, what are we looking at? I think they're looking at a first down from, from my vantage I'm at. It, it looks like a first down. Quick line note for the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans and the Farmers. 72 for, for Elmwood Brimfield is Novak. Him and, and Mr. Uh, Hank Skaggs are doing big time battle in the front and the uh, trenches. There you go. Well, Hank Skaggs has been a... Uh, there you go, a first down. You can hear it with the Farmington faithful. They were up as they signal for the first down. So... Now the ball spotted at the 13-yard line. They still have an opportunity to get another first down before the score. As I mentioned the last time these teams played, no back young man, as you mentioned, attended Farmington schools until two years ago. So he's very familiar with all the players on Farmington. Thanks for tuning in here on CD Country 107.9. Four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Elmwood Brimfield needs to stop here. Walker keeps the ball, and he's wrapped up at the 10. He's going to gain about three on that carry. I'm Farmington's coaching staff. I might remind Welker to not be so cavalier with the way he's carrying the ball. It looks like a loaf of bread out there for a second, Dakota. And uh, if he's not careful, somebody's going to swap that ball out of his hand. Okay, so you're just tuning in. We've had a turnover down by Elmore Brimfield. They've punted the ball. Farmington punted the ball. This is their second possession. They've got a second and seven at the 10-yard line in Trojan territory. So they're knocking at the door of the ISO. Gags in the backfield. Bologna goes in motion to the far sideline. He gets the pitch. This is one tackle. He's still on his feet. He wraps up a couple of defenders and gets close to the first down. Wow, I have really no idea how he made it because uh, Lane Wyatt forced the issue. He came up from his cornerback position and looked like he was going to tackle Bologna for a loss. Somehow he evaded Wyatt. And then I couldn't see who it was. And Elmwood Brimfield defender was right there uh, after he turned up field. And he evaded him as well and got all the way down to where it's now a very makeable third two. Third and two at the five-yard line. Farmers come set. It's going to be a keeper. They're going to push it right up the middle. He's still on his feet. A touchdown for the Farmington Farmers. I thought he was going to maybe get the first down. Somehow, he's running laterally to the ground and gets into the end zone. I thought he was one of the guards, Dakota. I honestly, I did. It looked like there was a great line surge, and instead... That was Welker that came through the pile all of a sudden, had never hit the ground. And uh, as we all know, Noah Welker is a, is a good-sized young man, and he was able to use his force to get through there and, and score a very important first touchdown for Farmington. They're going to probably go for two here. Jason, real quickly, what did you see on that play, and how did that light up, and how did they get that one into the end zone? Well, they went right over Skaggs, and, and as soon as you mentioned that, the official stand right down here in front of me didn't even raise his hand. He didn't know where the ball was. There you go. Thanks a lot, Jason. Two-point conversion. Looks like it's going to be Skaggs, and he stands up. No, he was the blocker, and it's going to be short of the two-point conversion. Who was that? That was Bologna, and it looked like he had all sorts of running room to the right if he aimed towards the pylon. As I thought, but obviously he's close to the action. It looked like he could have made it in, but he turned it up, and uh, Elmo Brickfield was right there to stop him. There you go. An important stop. There you go. Farmers up six to nothing. We've got three minutes left here in your first quarter. We'll be back here on CD Country 107.9 right after this. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North Fifth Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V, your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Old Field Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning. Everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church to know Christ and to make him known. 
and by M. Bixler Video Productions. If you're looking at getting married, give us a call. It's six nothing, just like that. Four possessions, two on each side, and the farmers strike first, but they miss a huge two-point conversion. John, we've talked about it. The farmers struggle on special teams, especially when they need the extra point. That might come back to haunt them. Yeah, that we've said that for quite a while, that the extra points eventually are going to come back to haunt them. For farmers' sake, we hope that doesn't happen today. And with Brimfield is definitely thinking, yeah, we hope that's today. So Nick James is going to kick off again from right to left, south to north. Three minutes and six seconds left in the first quarter. It is six to nothing here in Farmington. No scoring updates yet from the Rock Ridge Mercer County game, but we will keep you updated as much as we can. Line drive kick takes a good hop into the hands of Trojans at the 40-yard line in the tackle, and he gets absolutely nothing. And who was that? Jake Jepson. Jepson. There you go. Yeah, so Tom Bowers with the reception, but Jepson was like a rocket. Yeah, that, yeah I think that's a, an apt uh, uh, description there. It was like a rocket. He shot out of a cannon and came right at and, uh, and uh, really, really laid the wood for that, that uh, returner. So, that's this one up for you. The Trojans are going to move from left to right. They will have a first and ten, the ball sitting directly on the 40-yard line in Trojan territory. They've had good field position to start. You realize that the Farmers started way back at the 18-yard line on that last drive. Roll out, McCormick coming towards us. He's got hogs in his face. It's going to actually be a loss on that pass. Yeah, credit uh, credit Boggs for putting a lot of pressure on McCormick to where he had to get rid of that. And uh, believe it or not, actually, Elmwood Brimfield's lucky that they have a second and 11 on that because Boggs almost had McCormick's jersey and would have been second at about 20. So now second and 11 coming up for the Trojans. The ball on the near hash. A bunch set with Totten wide towards us. Boy, it's up the middle. He's out in the open field. That's a 35, 20. That's a touchdown for the Trojans all the way from the 39-yard line. I'll raise you a Bologna run with a Wyatt run. Well, the, the feet parted on that one for Lane Wyatt. There was a huge hole for him to run through. And once he got to the second level, there's nobody on Farmington that was going to catch him. Great blocking up front by Elmwood Brimfield. 61 yards to the house. And Jason, I don't know where you're at, but what happened on that one? What did you see down on the field that helped the Trojan get into the end zone? Sam Warner on the left tackle spot. He just dump trucked uh, John, or Mr. Tran for the Farmers, Randy Tran, and that opened up the hole. As McCormick rolled out to his right, he tossed it back inside, and, and it was wide open. So it's 6-6. Six, six. They're going to try the extra point. The kick is up. up. Looks like it's wide left. No good. So a missed two-point conversion by the Farmers and a missed extra point by the Trojans. Special team struggling. Well, the wind may have come into play there. That uh, uh, actually followed the wind pattern. It uh, wasn't very hard of a kick. And as it got up near the goalpost, it, it looked like it was pushed to the left. He didn't miss by much. So a little different than what we saw in the regular season. It's 6-6. Six to six. The Farmers scored 16 straight points, and then the Trojans scored 14. So now we've got a little bit of a back-and-forth action. 2.16 left here. We're going to go ahead and keep it here for you. 6-6 six, six is your score. We've had a turnover on down, a punt. Farmers then punted. Then they scored a touchdown. Elmwood Brimfield then scored a touchdown. Offensively, it's been two big plays. Bologna's run for 40-plus yards, and you had Wyatt's run for 61 yards. Now, that is a player that the Farmers have not seen this right. season. Right. Lane Wyatt. Yeah, well, we said at the beginning that was going to be a lift for Elmwood Brimfield. He showed why he's gained so many yards this year is that he, he really has some uh, excellent speed. And once he got about five yards down the field, as I said, there was nobody from to catch him. So this is the first kickoff opportunity for the Trojans. It'll be number 22, Grady Case. He'll be kicking off. The two men deep are Welker and Elam. Kick to size. Grabbed by, I believe that's Martinez, and he runs it to the 40, to the 43 from about the 35-yard line, and that was with men on his back the entire time. Well, that would bring to be advised probably not to kick it to Martinez, as he is a very large young man who is a backup fullback and can do something with it. Uh, play some tight ends for Farmington, too. Uh, they probably want to try to kick it to somebody else because he can do something with the ball once he gets it. 
So first and ten coming. Jags is not in. For the farmers. And he is working with the trainer down here on the near sideline. So that's a... Oh, well, you can see the fans are actually watching more Jags than they are the play. First and ten coming up. Two ten left in the first quarter. Walker hands it off to the flag in the backfield. That was a false start on uh, Jake Jeff and leaned forward uh, right before the snap. That would be a five-yard penalty on Farmer. And that's exactly what it is. So bring up first and 15 for the Farmer. Walker coming to the near sideline to grab a couple of plays. Discussing it. I don't exactly know what's going on here. It should be cut and dry, John. Yeah, I'm not really sure. They haven't marked it off yet. I don't know what they're doing. There, they finally mark it off. They're having a lengthy conversation with the captain for the Elmwood Grimfield Trojans. So, first and 15 here. 205 left in the first quarter. We've got a 6 6 ball game. And now the farmers have the ball again. And off, Jeff, he's going to go left side. He's wrapped up by three Elmwood Brimfield Trojans, the first man on the hit. Elmwood Brimfield Trojans, and looks like he's slow to get up. Nope, he's popping right up. That was number 72 for the Trojans, Brad Novak. Yeah, uh, Jeff looked like he had some running room, and uh, Elmwood Brimfield closed it up very quickly. So he's going to bring up second and 11 on the short loss. Actually, that was game, sorry, six. Game four off of the penalty. Second and 11. Okay, Colt Evans is, or Colt Evans is coming towards us. A little bit of confusion for the Farmers offense. He came out wide and he went back to the end position. Into the play clock here. Jeff gets it off in time. Welker rolls out to the right side. Takes it himself. And maybe gets the yard. Well, and that's motion we really haven't seen from Farmington this year. They're, they often are in motion, but it's usually that flex motion down to the, uh, you see from a wing T where they're, they're motioning down to the eye bat position. That was motion across the field. Uh, we've seen a lot of Farmington games this year, and that's, that's a little new wrinkle. So, third and nine coming up for the Farmers. They hurt themselves with a false start penalty to start this drive, and now they need a big play. They need to get the ball to the 48-yard line in Trojan's territory to convert for the first down. Three men in the backfield. Welker marks back calls to those men. They come set. Tags the, or that was still Martinez. Welker misses one tackle. No, he can't get free. A sack in the backfield. And isn't that lucky man? Marlott. Yep, there you go. He ate him up. Uh, it looked like he was unblocked. I, you know, I didn't see where he came from. But he, he was in the backfield so fast, it was as if he hadn't been blocked at all. Excellent play by the part of uh, number 62, Mark Marlott, for Elmwood Princefield. So the Farmers are going to have to punt this one away. So now Skaggs is on the sideline. He's sitting on the bench. He's the normal punter. So Luke Sanford is back, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. The Farmers take a timeout. We're going to take a 60-second timeout as well. We'll be back here on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoonerver Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. 
Welcome back, everybody, in Farmington. A punt coming up for the Farmers on fourth and long. And we had an offside penalty on the punt by the Trojans. The left side tried to collapse a little early there, Josh. Well, they had some yards to play with, so being a little over-aggressive right there, not the worst thing. Obviously, you don't want the penalty, but uh, that's really not going to hurt Elmer Grimm so much. You know, th this is going to be, I'm sure you don't want to be Luke Stanford right now. You haven't punted all year, and uh, he's standing back in the most uh, important game of the year now, and he's trying to punt. Uh, he has to have a lot of nerves going right now. He is standing at the 25-yard line, the ball at the 40-yard line. Snap is bad. A beautiful kick by Stanford all the way to the 20, over the head of the intended receiver, and the Farmers are going to jump on it. He was really close to touching that, John. Well, it looks like Luke Stanford should have been punting all year. I mean, obviously, he is very good, so that's, we're not questioning that. But well, that's an incredible punt for somebody who has to punt it all year. Just beautiful hang time, and that one's going to be spotted at the 21-yard line. Didn't miss a beat by bringing in the backup punter. Yeah, well, and, and Skaggs on defense, well, yeah, he looks like he's back in there, which, uh, you know, they're going to miss him on either side of the ball, but they've missed him more on defense than they were on offense. With 25 seconds left here in the first quarter, we've had one heck of a ball game so far. It's 6-6 tied up here in Farmington for your round two of Class 2A high school football playoff. Be a run right up the middle. The Trojans just take that one for a ride and get it to the 25. And it's the same thing you used to see in just a little rugby scrum up the middle, and they get all the forward progress. Give a lot of credit to Elmer Brimfield's line to push that pile forward and uh, give them five, uh, you know, maybe even five and a half yards. Real quick scoring update from the Alito Mercer County Lockridge game 0 0 at the one at the end of the first quarter. So, kind of a surprise, a defensive showdown. Good second effort on the part of number 23 on that, Jacob Sollenberger. Looked like he was going to be down for uh, no gain, and he was able to lean up to where it's now third and about one. That's the end of your first quarter. We're going to take a 60-second timeout. We'll be back here on CD Touch to 107.9 right after this. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yonts, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By Hy-Vee, your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning, everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back everybody here in Farmington. Real quickly, we'll try to grab Jason before um, this next play. Jason, any updates from down on the field? Uh, Skaggs, do you have any idea what happened to him? Anything else? I don't have an update on Skaggs at the moment. I do have an update from the Inwood Brimfield sideline where it just came from. After the touchdown run by Wyatt, quarterback McCormick was getting attended to his left ankle from the training staff. I know you couldn't see it because there's so many players over there, but watch the left ankle of McCormick. He was getting attended to after the touchdown run. There you go. So now a quick run by the Trojans, and it looks like they're going to have enough for the first down on third and short. That's exactly what it is. Well, they, they look like they're just a, you know, they've already had the one really big run, but they look like they're just a, a you know, a juke step away from another big play. They've had often uh, plays where there's uh, one Farmington defender bringing down somebody who looks like they could be running into the clear. So we'll see if they can break it on the long one here. And like Jason said, we'll keep an eye on McCormick. We've got one wide each side. McCormick handoff up the middle. And I, I've been on the take. I was watching McCormick. I thought he was going to roll out and throw it to the near side. Yeah, well, he, once again, he's an excellent faker. That was uh, Lane Wyatt. Same play we've seen about seven, eight times already, but uh, good enough for about a two to three yard game. Lane Wyatt, the one that ran it in from 61 yards out. He's always one player away from breaking out in the green field. Yep. 
second and seven coming up. Quick pass by McCormick into the hands of Cotton. I don't know wow. how many as well as Elam were all over that receiver. Well, McCormick threw a bullet. That was an excellent pass, and I, I really credit Elman Brimfield. That's a smart play right there. No one thought pass, and uh, they came up with what they needed in a very, very tight window to throw that ball. 11-13 left in the second quarter. If you're just tuning in, it is 6-6. Six six. This one's all tied up in Farmington. The Trojans and the Farmers. And as they run to the left side and wrapped up, Jefferson ate them up. Wyatt, no game. Yeah, but if you're if you're Elmwood Springfield, you might not feel too bad about that. Jake Jefferson's a state. If he's at the line of scrimmage, that's what Elmwood Springfield wants because eventually they're going to throw the ball where that safety should be. So if, if you're Farmington, you might want to tell your safety to back off. That could have been a blitz. We don't know. But he was awfully close to one of the Second and ten. McCormick keeps it himself. He rolls to the right side, and he gets into Farmer's territory to the 49 on a five-yard carry. Well, and that's uh, credit once again to Elmwood Brinkfield. They needed to show that quarterback. It's almost like a baseball. You have a show-me pitch every once in a while. And that's, uh, that's where they need to show that the quarterback can keep the ball because you have to respect that fake. And 20 left here in the second quarter. The Trojans have the ball in Farmer's territory again. Third and five coming up. They need to get it to the 44-yard line. McCormick's going to pass to the right side. Oh! oh. Intercepted. Totten was the intended receiver. Bologna almost had it. Yeah, it looked like Bologna was the intended receiver, and Totten was the defender on that one, Dakota. That was a... Uh, uh, well played by both players, well played by Bologna to get the pass, and well played by Cotton to break that up. That would have been a huge momentum swing. So let's see here, John, putting your coach's hat on. You punt. punt. Okay. You punt, yeah. You've got a good, enough good momentum now if you're on with Brimfield. You don't need to do something silly. Put a punt here and just put him back deep. Ball is at the 48. Good snap on the punt. He kicked it from his own 40-yard line. High, end over end kick. It's going to bounce at the 10. And Sollenberger is going to down it. At the eight-yard line, what a boot! Yeah, that's just what you want. Going with Brimfield, that's just what you want. You pin Farmington down deep. You tell your defense, get us a quick stop. We're going to have the ball in about the 50. We're going to go in and score. And Jason down there on the field, it looked like on the punt return there, the Farmers didn't want anything to do with that one. No, they didn't at all. And a quick injury note to McKay Skaggs. You were asking about that a minute ago. It's his left knee. You can see it down here on the sideline. It is completely wrapped in tape, so I'll keep you updated as I find out more on that. There you go. Thanks a lot, Jason. This is what we love about the three-man crew. We get all these scoring updates and injury updates. And it's a lot of fun. So, 9.56 left in the second quarter. The Farmers backed up at their own eight-yard line. They're going to run this one up the gut. Still on the seat and eaten by two men from the secondary. Who was that? Bologna. Yeah, Bologna on second effort. He was able to get up and get... Uh, well, one boy. He got it deep in the backfield, and that looked like a longer game. It was a one-yard game. So, second and eight coming up. He gets it to the... Like a spot of the, about the 11-yard line. Farmer slowing down a little bit on offense. We talked about it during the break, John. The regular season game was back and forth, back and forth. We couldn't even catch our breath. This one, they a little bit of a slower pace. Still pretty fast compared to last week. Yes, runs it up the middle. He gets to the 20 for the first down. Well, that's heartening for Farmington. You want to see McKay Skagg get going because so far, Elmwood Brimfield contained him very well, and he has somewhat of an injury. We don't know how serious, but obviously he's been out a little bit, so that's a good time for Farmington. 9-15 left on the first half clock. First and 10 coming up for the Farmers. The ball spotted at their own 20. They started that last possession that they scored on the 18th. Walker keeps the ball on the take the Skaggs, and he jumps over the line for a couple. Well, and even though he didn't get the tackle on that play, once again, Mark Marlott pushed that pile back. Welker had to run backwards to try to run forward. There wasn't much room there. The defensive line just pushed everything backwards. Second and eight coming up. And if you look at the Farmer squad, the entire squad looking over to Coach Barton for the play calls, um, usually running a little quicker pace than this. Man goes in motion. It's going to be the line you towards us. It's going to go to the left side. He had blockers out in front, but the Trojans ate him up. Well, Skaggs was able to rumble ahead for about, oh, six yards. About a third and three for Farmington. So at least, even if Farmington doesn't make this, and clearly they still can, but they've gotten at least out of the shadow of their own end zone. Nick McCoy on the tackle. 
So John set this one up third and four. Eight minutes left in the first half, and then we've got a tie ball game, 6-6, six, six, Elmwood Brimfield and the Farmers. This one runs left side. Actually, cut back more to the middle. Where is that one going to be? Uh, they look like they're beyond the first down marker. Is that right on the 30, and they are right on the 31. So another first down conversion. You know, it looks like the Farmers just want to back up in their own territory. Well, you know, looking at this, making the comment from the farming side, there's almost nobody playing what you would call safety depth. The, the, the uh, Elmwood defense is leaving themselves open to a big play as they get everybody up in the box. This is going to be a run up the middle and that's Skaggs yet again for a short game. And we saw one pass last week to Cody Martinez for about 20 yards. That's yeah. all it was in terms of in the air for the Farmers. Right on the wind today, it's going to be tough for them to throw. Second and seven coming up. The Farmers with a long count here. And we're going to have a timeout called by the Farmington Farmers. Hmm. We're going to take a 30-second timeout, and we're going to come back and break down what we just saw by the Farmers' offense. 30 seconds here on CD Country, 7.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Um, real quickly, we're going to jump down to Jason. He's standing on the sideline for the farming farmers. Jason, what exactly was the mindset on that one? Did you catch anything? Well, Coach, Coach Martin on the, on the far side of the field away from the play saw somebody jump, and he was all over this official here in front of us trying to get an explanation. I couldn't hear a lot of it, but uh, another quick note from the case guys is he's running inside the tackles. The first thing the Elmwood Brimfield guys are doing, the first person to him is trying to strip him. The ball control will be something for Skaggs to focus on. There you go. So, an interesting John, put your coach's hat on right there. Were they just going out for the hard count? Well, it, it should look like. It looked like they didn't have a play call. A lot of times, if you're trying to draw the other team offside, you don't even have a play called. So then your team should never jump offside. Uh, that's an old coach's trip where you just have a no play, you know, trying to draw them off kind of play. So, the second and eight, the Farmers come back out. Off the timeout. It's going to be Bologna. He comes for top, gets the team, and he's wrapped up, and he maybe gets the yard. Yeah, it was good patience on the part of Bologna where he was trying to set up his blockers. Uh, Elmwood Brimson really close the ball well. There's not a lot of room there. I credit him for getting the yard. We've had four punts so far in this ball game, and the Farmers are knocking at the door a punt number five. The ball sitting right at the 35-yard line, the nose touching it. Third and six coming up for the Farmers. The line comes in motion towards us. Walker's going to keep the ball himself, and he's wrapped up. The line ate that one up. They knew it's like the minute they saw it, 62, who was that? Mark Marlott again. Mark Marlott is uh, getting his mail in the backfield here today, I think. He, uh, he is really dominating. And uh, that's not a bad play call, though, if you're a Farmington, because you're using McKay's gag, somewhat of a battering ram lead block. And uh, if it hadn't been for Marlott, that probably would have been a first down. So another punt coming up. And it looks like Stanford's back again. Hey, it worked last time. Let's try it again. Fourth and four. 
He bobbles the staff. And he's going to be eaten up with a 23-yard line. Sanford had to be a good snap, just dropped it. Yeah, there's really, it's inexplicable. There was no reason he, he had the snap. It was right to him. As a matter of fact, it was a lot better than the snap he got last time. I think he just took his eyes off of it. And, uh, you know, when you have somebody that's inexperienced back there trying to punt, some crazy things can happen, and that is a huge turn of events for Elmwood Brinkfield. Right at his waist, he grabbed it, bobbled a little bit, then it hit the ground, picked it up again, and then dropped it again. And by the time he turned around, he had two white jerseys right in his face. Yeah, yeah. Not enough time to pick that up and kick it. So, now they're in scoring position right now. The ball's at the 25-yard line. has got one wide towards us. It's going to be a run with Wyatt. He's got blockers out in front. Jepson gets steamrolled in the defensive side and Skaggs in on the tackle. Uh, yeah, pretty short game. Once again, we're seeing a lot of that where players are having to run side to side. Look, you know, they run for a long time, but for not a lot of game. Uh, Looked like he may have gotten maybe two, maybe three, depending on where they spot it. 5.33 left here in the first half. Keep in mind that the Farmers get the ball to start the second half. So now we've got one wide each side. They run that one right up the middle. Lots of deception on that one. They had Donovan McCoy rolling to the right side. They had McCormick following him. But it was just a run with Sollenberger up the middle. Yep, it's uh, you know a lot of the same plays, but with just different backfield motion sets uh, on the part of them with Brimfield. A lot of it's just right between the tackles. Third and five coming up. The ball at the 20-yard line. This is in Farmer's territory. A huge stop. And I, you got to believe, John, that this is two more possessions or two more plays here. They're in the four-down territory. The run. And that is Wyatt, I believe. I, I think that's the run that they had when uh, Wyatt ran for 60 yards for the touchdown. Uh, that time, uh, obviously, a better result for Farmington, but still now it's fourth and very, very close. Well, one and a half, maybe, maybe two yards to go. A defining moment in this game right here, John. Fourth and two coming up. We've got a timeout on the field, and we're going to keep it here to break down what we've got. We're going to send it down to Jason real quick to talk about what we've seen, and we're going to bring it back up to the booth. Jason, so we've got fourth and two coming up. Everybody out there on the, the field, what can you hear from the farmer's side? Because that's where you're standing for defense. I can hear I can hear Coach Martin uh, barking at McKay Skaggs to get up on the line of scrimmage. This last play that was over here on the sideline where Skaggs tackled Wyatt, Coach Coach Martin was telling McKay, stay up on the line of scrimmage, follow the ball, don't bite on the fake. There you go. And fake could be a very good opportunity here for Coach Hollis and the Trojans. John, fourth and two, the ball sitting at the 16-yard line. You need this to capitalize on a huge turnover by the Farmers. What are you calling this, Coach Hollis? Well, I think you're giving it to Wyatt because at it's, it's this time of the season, you're going to give it to Wyatt. You're going to run him behind your best blockers. And if Farmington beats it, okay. But you're not going to try to do something that you haven't done well. You're going to pick something. And you usually have maybe two or three plays in these situations. You're like, these are the only ones we run when we need yards. So it's going to be something they've run a lot, I would believe. Although you never know. So here we go, folks. The Farmers turned it over on down technically on that last possession, and now the Trojans need a fourth down conversion. It's going to be a handoff. It goes left side. It looks like Randy Graham may have stopped it short. Yeah, that mark, oh boy. It is right on the 15-yard line. Oh, that's a very favorable spot for Farmington. That ball, is if the tip is touching those uh, the, the yard line, it would be at the 15. There you go. Uh, from here, it looks like they didn't get it, but I don't know. We're going to go down to Jason real quickly. Jason, you're looking right down the 15-yard line. What do we got? I, I think the ball, and looking where I'm at, and I'm right on top of the ball here, I think I think they're short by, by about a half a football from my judgment. Okay. Coach Martin just yelled at the official, I hope the lines are straight. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. The markers come out sitting right on the ball. It's close to touching. And it's going to be short, folks. And the Farmers force the turnover on down. Well, you know, uh, if there's any Elmwood Brimfield fans listening, do not fault your coaches on that. Uh, they, they ran what's worked for them all year. Uh, Farmington just made a play. And uh, you, you can't fault Farmington. You can't fault Elmwood Brimfield. Uh, it was just a hard, hard charging defense on that at that time. If I'm Elmwood Brimfield, I'd probably call the exact same play. Well, you got to think about it, John. You had a two teams at 440, uh, 40 points a game. They only give up 10 a game. 
something had to give here that happened in week 6, 16, 14, we're seeing it again. Right. Well, typically, uh, you know, you won't look at the defense more than the offense because uh, when you play, uh, you know, teams and you can rack up against some lesser opponents, but, you know, zero is zero against anybody. First and ten for the Farmer, deep in their own territory. Walker gets out. He's got a blocker in front, and he goes to the near sideline. And actually, Coach Martin falls down on that play. He trips over one of the yard markers. You know, I want to be sure to give credit there. Luke Sanford, who was the punter and dropped that last punt and has been saved here, so that really didn't hurt them, made an excellent block on that play to spring welfare. Gets that one to the 26-yard line on a quick 11-yard carry, and that gets them a new set of downs. Need a back out of the shadow of their own end zone here. Well, I credit once again, Farmington, that was a good play call because Elmwood, uh, Elmwood's defense has really been flowing to the ball. You want to run something that slows them down. Looks like Walker keeps it and somehow gets five yards out of that. Now, I, I like what Farmington's doing here because they're telling their offensive line, it's your job to get this going, and they're just saying, we're going to come right at you. I, I really like what they're doing right here. 3.56 left here in the first half as the Dutch tuning in. It is 6-6. We've got a tie ball game. The Farmington Farmers have the ball at their own 31-yard line. A couple of turnover on downs and a whole bunch of punts. Coming our way, and that was Elam, and he stood up at the 35. There's a fake to the fullback and the second back through, and uh, he got the ball about... Uh, three yards and was met by a couple of defenders who decided that was as far as he was going to go and now it's third very short. Uh, I would anticipate a quarterback sneak here, but you never know. So third and one coming up. The wind still howling from the west across the field, shutting down any passing game for either squad. Third one coming up at the 35. Farmers look like they're going right with Welker and that's what it is. And based on the third, they've got, got it. Yeah, he, he, he was the last man through, almost like the touchdown he scored, where he's the farthest man down the field. He gained about three yards on that play. So, and that's exactly what it is. They signal for the change to move. First and ten for the Farmers. You call that one. You put your coach's hat on, and it was pretty simple. That, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, it's the fewest things can go wrong on a quarterback team. You say, we just need a surge. No, Welker's a, a good-sized young man. He's very strong and you figure you've got to be able to get half a yard. Okay, first and ten. The ball at the 37-yard line. The Farmers, on their score, move from the 18-yard line. They were able to march the ball 82 yards down the field in three and a half minutes. They want to do the same thing again. Welker rolls left side. He's still on his feet, but he's wrapped up with only one defender to beat at the 43. Well, and that one defender, I believe, was that number 34? Was that Sollenberger? Uh, I'm sorry, Bowers, excuse me. Um, that, if he does not make that tackle, I believe he's in for a touchdown, and he being Welker. So, uh, Elmwood Brimfield is very fortunate that that is not a touchdown part of Farmington. With two minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half, the Farmers would love to end this with no time left with a score. It's going to be a run. Right side, Bologna trips up. Kind of a low tackle at his knee. That was a curious uh, way to go down. I, I'm not really sure how, what happened there, but it looked like he almost, someone grabbed his arm and he fell forward that way. I think they are going for the ball and trying to create a strip. And then off the ball on that one on the left side, you saw an Elmwood player fall down a little late. Well, you've seen a little of that on both sides as we've gotten along here. You hope that uh, both sides can keep it under con their composure together. We don't have any silly fouls, any penalties. A minute 39 left. The Farmers still haven't cracked this field. They come set. Two ends and one man in the backfield. That's Skaggs. And he plows the midfield. Gets it to the 48 on a six-yard carry. Well, they haven't been using Skaggs. And you had to wonder if his, if his injury was significant enough that he wasn't getting the ball. But, boy, it looked like they just kind of been uh, building up some uh, kinetic energy there for him. But he kind of came out like he was wound up like a top. He really came through that hard. So, first and 10, the ball for 49, sitting in the middle of the white star at midfield. That's going to be a pitch to the left side. That's Jeff, and he's got big guys in front of him, and he's going to be wrapped up at the conversion marker on a 12-yard carry. Well, and that's the same play Jake Jepson scored on a couple times last week against Beardstown, and uh, they get a couple blockers out in front. Jake Jepson is an excellent downhill runner, has been for a few years for Farmington. Once he can see where he's going downfield, he's very shifty. First. And then a minute left here in the first half. It's a long pitch that 
Elam, or is that Bologna? Bologna. Bologna. He's got Bowles out in front. He puts the block, and he's going to be wrapped up, taken down at the 10-yard line. As Joey Boggs got down the field and made a, a critical block, and Bologna used it very well as a shield and got down all the way to the 10, and it's 58 seconds left in the half. You couldn't draw this up better for Farmington if you tried. This is exactly what they'd want to do, as you said, is try to score with as little time as possible, although they'll take scoring on this play, I'm sure. We've got a timeout on the field. Elmwood. Elmwood's going to take a timeout. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back here on City Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V. Your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning, everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back, everybody, here in Farmington. On City Country 107.9, we're going to take a quick timeout with Jason. We're going to see what's going down on the field. We've got first and ten. They can get a first down conversion at the one-yard line. Jason, do you know anything? Well, we've got play call coming up. What are you hearing down on the field? On the last, last two plays, in short, or last two drives in short yardage situation, Coach Martin has called the same play twice which has been the QB keeper. Elmwood Brinkfield knows that signal, so Coach Martin has changed that. We'll see if that changes. Also, Sanford made up big time on this drive on the O-line for the, the botched punt. He is just owning Hanley on this drive. There you go. 58 seconds left here. The Farmers have it. It's a fake to the left side. Welker's going to keep it. There he goes, right side. And he's going to be pushed out just short of the end zone. Looks like it's a three. Well, with 52 and a half seconds left, I would anticipate, unless there's an injury and it's significant enough, you're going to see McKay Skaggs here now. Uh, this is uh, the Farmington demo all year. You get down right to near the end zone, you give it to McKay Skaggs. Okay, 52 seconds left. The clock is rolling. Second and three coming up. Man in motion. That's going to be Bologna. It's going to be Skaggs up the middle. Touchdown for the Farmington Farmers. They did motion from left to right, and they gave the ball back towards the left, and they all the motion looked to be going to the right. Somewhat looked like a trap, but there was no pulling blocker on that. Uh, had a trap look to it, so uh, there was a big hole there for Skaggs, and ooh, right now there's somebody down on Elmwood Brimfield. I hope he's okay. Well, let's see here. Slow to get up. And Might be our lot. Jake, no, no, it isn't. Can you see who that is down there? 72, no bad. Yeah, it is Novak, and Sanford just hit him so hard, I don't think Novak knows where he is. Well, that's oh. something. He's walking off under his own power. Thanks a lot, Jason. Coach Hollis came out to see what was going on, and that's a, that's a big boy right there. That's, uh, let's see here. Ooh, if I can find him. 6'6", 270. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, pretty legitimate. He is a very large young man. He's a sophomore. So, 45 seconds left. 12 to 6 on that touchdown. Crucial extra point coming up here for the Farmers. They missed the two point on their first drive. They've not been very successful over the course of the last few games trying to get this two point conversion. Stepson goes in motion left side. It's going to be a fake. Welker keeps it himself. He goes right side. He walks into the end zone. Two points for the Farmington Farmers. Makes it 14 to 6. That's a gutsy play call because usually on two point conversions, you give the quarterback an option. There was no option to pass that ball. And uh, that was, that, I'll just say it again, that's gutsy. 
that's a one-man uh, show right there when you're saying, you know what, I believe my quarterback can get in on a bootleg. And there was somebody there to stop him, but he overcame it. And Jason, real quickly on that one, it looked like they just ate it up. Elmwood bit on everything, went to the right side, and Walker walked in. Yeah, I did. Farmington took advantage of where Novak would have been on that left end, and they just exploited the next man up for Elmwood. There you go. Good point, Jason. You're right on that one. A man goes down. We've already seen it. Stanford box the punt. Novak not there to stop the run. So, things, the little things you got to point out in the playoff game. And they, it's huge to get that two-point purchase. Well, and you know Farmington's coaches are saying, let's stop the celebrating now because Elmwood's always one play away from a touchdown. So they're going to try to button it down here and make sure Elmwood does not get into the end zone. Well, you said it, Don. You made a comment. You couldn't have wrote it any better on that drive, marching all the way down from deep in their own territory. Maybe use a little bit four o'clock on that possession. 45 seconds is plenty of time. And they've had good field position. They started an average of the 40-yard line, so... Let's see if James can boot a little deeper. What amazes me is Sanford's taking the punt, but he's not on the kickoff. That's yeah. a head scratch. Yeah, although James looks very good kicking it off. I mean, it's been an effective kickoff for Farmington. James, big hop. That ball's still loose, and it's wrapped up by the intended receiver. And he's wrapped up at around the 26-yard line. And that was Josh Grant. Josh Lozier. And it's Grant Stevens carrying the ball. Lozier the skinniest guy down on the field wraps up the running back. Yeah, that's uh, that's what Farmington wanted, but once again, it's only one play is all Elmwood Brimfield needs. So uh, whether they have the ball in their shoe or the other team's shoe, they're always a play for scoring. And now Coach Holler has the ball. His team at the 27-yard line. Their worst field position to start a drive on a kick that just kept rolling. McCormick keeps it. And it's going to be a hand on it coming back this way. Wyatt's out in the open field. Zips is going to cut him off. And he pushes him out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's that same play where they found success on the last touchdown. And uh, that's not for Jeps and taking a deep angle on that. That would have been a touchdown and a huge backbreaker almost for Elmwood Brimfield in terms of really deflating Farmington's balloon. So now the ball at the 47-yard line. 33 seconds left. Wyatt had that 61-yard run and add on the number 21 on that one. First and 10 for the Trojans. Look at the secondary for the Farmers. They've got four feet. It's going to be a quick pass to Wyatt. And he's pushed out of bounds on a short loss by Bologna. Well, and they are indicating that it is at, uh, out of bounds. They've stopped the clock. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone Brimfield called a timeout. We've got a timeout on the field. And we, we want to step away, but we've got such crucial plays coming up here. 26 seconds left. We're going to keep it here. 14 to 6. If you're just tuning in, the Farmington Farmers on top of the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. The Trojans have the ball, and they are still in their own territory at the 49 yard line. And let's see here. Second and 10 coming up. John, when you look at play calls here, Wyatt has been effective. Did you keep it in that man's hands? Yeah, absolutely, because he's your big play home run hitter. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they ran that same play that got him uh, down here to the 50 when Jefferson ran him out of the one that he pulled the touchdown. I believe it's the same play. Uh, you know, they tried to throw him out to in the flats there to see what he could do last time, but Farmington had it well defended. Second and nine coming up. 26 seconds left. Elmwood just used the timeout. They're going to send one wide towards the top of the field. And goes in motion, backwards almost. And that's going to be a quick run up the middle. Was that why it gets Yeah, run? it was that same play again where they just run a, a little pitch as he goes. Oh, it's almost like a shovel pass, but, um, but it's a very interesting look. And nine seconds left. The Trojans, I think that's going to be it, folks, for the first half. You bet it is. So, first half. unbelievable. That's what it was built up to be. 14 to 6 for the Farmers on top. So here's the plan, folks, for our halftime show, brought to you by CJ's Hair and Nail Salon in the Ludlum Center, serving the community for over 30 years. Call 647-4711 to make an appointment. We're going to send it down to our man on the field, Jason Rockhold, then we're going to take a timeout, then DJ Stone's going to bring you your halftime show. Jason, what a first half. I think the first half is an understatement. This is uh, close to the final score we had in week seven here, but... Uh, Quick note there, Jensen got away with one on uh, Wyatt. Jensen hit him about four feet out of bounds. 
Nonetheless, good first half. I think we'll see a better second half. Yep, we're going to go ahead and take a quick timeout, and we'll be back with your halftime show right after this. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back, everybody, here in the booth. The Hill Horn, John Asplund. We've got Jason Ronkel down on the field. We're going to keep an eye on for Casey Martin for a quick interview. Hopefully you enjoyed your halftime show brought to you by CJ's Hair and Nail Salon in the Ludlum Center. Once he has Casey next to him, we'll send it down to Jason. Quickly, offensively, 187 yards total offense. Farmers, 132 for the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. So equally matched up, you take away about four big players. There's nothing offensively. Yeah, that's, that's huge right there. there. It has been a game of big plays, but it's been uh, big plays on both sides. And this is your halftime show brought to you by CJ's Hair and Nail Salon. Coach Martin, traffic out there as the farmers warm up. We've seen a couple of turnover on downs, a whole slew of hunts. But the story is it's 14-6. The farmers on top yet again. They have led pretty much every minute in the two games that they played except for about eight minutes of game time where it's tied up at 6-6. Six, six. So they, if you would like to say it, dominated in terms of controlling the game in the two games so far. But, John, we still got 24 minutes of football left in this one. Yeah, Elmwood Brimfield is uh, no stranger coming from behind in, uh, in some of their conference events this year. Uh, they were down to Knoxville uh, in late in the fourth quarter and still won by two scores. So yep. uh, Elmwood Brimfield still pretty good. We're going to send a real quick down to Jason. You've got Casey Martin. What do you got, Jason? I do. I'm head coach Casey Martin here. Coach, good first half. What you expected? Yeah, I mean, I expected it to be really physical. And team, you know, the whole body is pretty much be ahead. I was like a roller coaster. Momentum is, you know, we had it for a while. We lost it. They got it. Back. Now we got to start off the second half. We're on offense. First, we've got to recover the kick. I think it might onside kick. Second of all, we establish our dominance, you know. Any, any halftime adjustments? Staying with the game plan from the first half. So we got some things to talk about. And, uh, you know, there's no secret to win in the physical football game. You have to control both sides of the ball, not turn it Thanks, Coach. That's Coach Martin. Back up to you, Dakota. Thanks a lot, Jason. Uh, we're uh, in full steam today. Our stuff in the booth, Jason, down on the field. B.J. Stone with your halftime pregame show. Uh, Brian Wingo back in the studio. Thanks a lot for Brian manning two phones and scoring updates, and he's had a handful today. So we just heard what Coach Martin's going to do. So I'm going to make you Coach Hollis here, John. <laughs> you have to think, okay, I'm down eight points. How am I adjusting coming out? You know, Coach Hollis is one of those. He doesn't really talk to us. He is so focused on the field. So you're going to be makeshift coach. All right. Well, he's the same hairline, so I can be Coach Hollis here. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd say we're just going to do the same thing. You know, if you're Elmer Grimm, you have a tradition uh, of very high-level football. You're not going to – I think if you went around and started thinking, you know, we're going to do a lot of things different, that would be telling your kids you're panicking. And they're not panicking. I mean, they're, they're down 14 to 6. Uh, they have an extreme amount of confidence in what they do. And uh, I think they're just going to keep doing it. Now, if if uh, come into play, then obviously that may factor in. We saw uh, Mr. Novak, who's a very large young man, uh, leave the field. I hope he's okay. Um, if he's not able to come back, you may see something there. But barring any injury, uh, I'm, I'm telling my exact same thing. We're going to score. 
We already did it once. We just need a couple breaks here and there, and we're gonna and we're gonna get the ball. So I don't see much of anything. Real quickly, Wyatt has 105 yards on the ground on nine carries and averages out to 11 a carry. Three games, he keep him under 10. Well, he's averaging 11. So that's something the Farmers could uh, down there on the line. Who's the leading rusher for the Farmington Farmers? It's not McKay Skaggs. It's Max Kawani. Okay. He's got a nose on seven carries, averaging out to 14 a carry. So Max Polanya on that big 40-plus yard run, another 21-yard run that set up the two scoring plays. You take those away, Farmington probably has no points on the board. Yeah, exactly right. And I think, uh, you know, we talked a little bit off, off air. Uh, if this is the same score, if Farmington is lead in the fourth quarter, starting the fourth quarter, I think you're just going to see McKay Skaggs, McKay Skaggs, McKay Skaggs, McKay Skaggs. Because that's what Farmington does. They wear you down. And uh, they use their big offensive line and just push behind a very big fullback. So Elmwood Brimfield's going to need a stop, obviously, here. They can't get down two scores. But then Farming rely on just doing a battering ram offense the rest of the game. So this is a huge, huge, huge first series especially for Elmwood Brimfield. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North Fifth Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By Hy-Vee, your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning, everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. So, same way, it's going to be kicked from right to left, south to north, just like the farmers did. Got a little too excited at the beginning of the game. They kicked it off before the game clock was even set, before the official said, let's play some ball. So, the clock is ready, 12 minutes up on the scoreboard. It is 14 to 6 to start your second half. The Farmers have over the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. Thanks for tuning in here on CD Country 107.9. Another beautiful Prairie Land matchup. We've seen that for 11 straight weeks here on this radio station. And the dump kick to about the 35-yard line. So the Farmers are going to have good field position to start. Well, Max, you have to catch that ball, and all of a sudden you saw him covering his eye, like shading it, like to be got in the sun. That had to spear uh, into both Bologna and the rest of the Farmington faithful here, but he was able to secure it. So the Farmers will pass at their own 35-yard line. Each team turned the ball down. Farmers got two touchdowns, one at the hands of Skaggs, one by Welker, and one at the 61-yard run. The big play that we talked about for the Farmers. Skaggs runs it up the middle. He's still on Runs over three, four defenders, and gets it to midfield on a 20-yard run. Wow. That was, he came out. Uh, there was a big hole, and he, he came through there. And once again, I tell you what, I want to give the game ball to Grady Case. Two times now, he has stuck his nose in there. And Grady Case is 5'7", and it says 100. He is not 170. And uh, he gives up a lot of weight. He stuck it in there and saved the touchdown. First and Farmers gag picks up four on that carry. Come right out of the gate. Same dose of medicine that they like to do all season long. The gag gag, and he just takes the whole herd of white along with him. Well, and if uh, and what usually goes to script is then they'll fake it to gag to give it to the next back. Second and seven coming up. It's going to come our way, and that's Bologna. He misses one wrapped up from behind, and the ball did come loose but it is going to be spotted at the 34-yard line. 
uh, he uh, cut it up. Uh, he looked like he was faking outside, and then he cut it up inside, and I missed the number for the defense. Uh, he was able to reach his arm out there and almost strip that ball. And lighten up as he cut back towards us. There was a defender right behind him. He stepped it out, but he was able to fall on his own. First and ten coming up. So he hand off. Skaggs up the middle. He takes it for a couple of yards. And we'll give him about four. You see that uh, Brad Novak is back in the game from with Brimfield, so that's a good sign. He's not injured. And uh, so it looks like guys are relatively healthy and playing with a full complement of their players. 10.43 left in the third quarter. The Farmers have the lead, and they're driving in. Jepson goes left side and goes absolutely nowhere. And Novak. That, and that was Brad Novak, who was from uh, the back side and rushed right down the line of scrimmage and was able to stop that play. Excellent play on the part of Novak. First carry in the second half before a loss, so that brings up third and seven. The Farmers have the ball, and it is spotted at the 31-yard line in Trojan territory. John, are they in Territory. Oh, absolutely. At this point, let's lose yards on a penalty or something. One wide each side, Skaggs directly behind him. He looks the pass. He comes towards us in the boot and just runs into a defender. He didn't even see him come around. Number 56, Matt Hanley. Well, now it'll be an interesting decision because they did lose. You know, and Skaggs is able to punt. I think they do punt. Now. Talked about it, and I think you're right. How they, they backed them up far enough. This is kind of in the zone. It's good to see Skaggs back in the front. Because Stanford's just kicking the ball as far as he can. Right. I think Skaggs can do a uh, cough here. And it's going to be a fake to Welker. I don't even think he's ready for I don't think that for. was a fake to Welker. I don't, I don't know what that was. That looked like, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Either he wasn't ready or maybe no one told him it was a fake. I don't know what that was. But, uh, it hit him in the chest and he uh, ran forward. You know, I... That's not, even at that point, it's not a terrible thing for Farmington just because uh, last time they had a, you know, a tackle for a much bigger loss. Uh, well, with Brimfield gets the ball in the 33-yard uh, line, so uh, nothing too bad. Too bad there for Farmington. Jason, real quickly, was that meant to be a fake punt? No, I do not believe so. He had his hands on his hips and was shaking his head like it was just a bad snap. It looked like it hit Welker awkwardly. There you go. Nine left. It's going to be a quick run here by the Trojans. They go to the right side on a quick carry by McCoy. It's on four. I'd love to be able to start describing something different for Elmwood, but basically we can just say, the back who runs it up the middle. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're just doing the same thing they always do. 9 6 left. Team 6. Farmers up here in the third quarter. Look at that. McKay Skag looks like he set up the field to the right side and they just stuck them. And he went backwards. Yeah, that was the quarterback McCormick who turned the field and looked like he was going to have some running room, and uh, all of a sudden uh, the farming defense will right the ball. And, uh, leaves the third and maybe four. The ball is sitting on the 40-yard line in Trojan territory, bringing the third and four with 8.37 left in the third quarter. Again, when these two teams match up, it's just fourth and quick action. McCormick, it's going to be a handoff. He went to the second man, and it actually ended up in the and that's Wyatt for a short gain of maybe a yard. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the same play they've run many times. It resulted in a touchdown once, a long gain another time, but Farmington was ready that time, and I would anticipate that Elmwood Brimfield, although you can't rule out that this, this isn't a terrible place for a fake if they try to. If the ball is on the 40-yard line, back standing at the, around the 28-yard line for the punt, snap is good, and the kick, very good. Bounces, and it's touched by a farmer. Walker's going to keep it. Get to a good... Novak just misses Walker, and he's wrapped up at the 28-yard line. Well, last year, Walker was still a tight end for Farmington. They kicked off to him over at Elmwood, and uh, he ran it all the way back for a He is a very effective open field runner. And uh, that was a little awkward in that the ball bounced. It kind of hit him, and then he turned around and started running. But uh, he knows what to do with it if it gets in the open field. So Elmwood Brimfield was... Uh, Fortunate that that's the only return he had. My question is, how is Novak, the first man, close to that? He missed it, but I see a 6'6", 270 pound young man running down the field. That's impressive. Then for the Farmers, they get it back. They were not able to make anything happen on the first possession in this half. Two motion. That's got to be a flag. Yeah. 
And that's exactly what it's going to be. Blow that dead. What happened is, is each end shuffled their feet. One actually did go in motion us. That would be Elon and Jeffson. Yeah, you can't do that. This isn't stadium football. You can only have one in uh, motion at a time. So uh, that was a clear penalty on Huntington. So that will be a long first down possession again. Again, and a long conversation with the official and the captain. You have to mention it's been a very clean game in terms of penalties and overall yardage. Last department had over 100 yards in penalties. Yeah, it's, it's great to see this is a very clean to play game. Now the clock will roll, first and 15, with just under eight minutes left in this third quarter. Only one man in motion this time with Elon Ford. Skag jumps over one defender and gets it back to their original line of scrimmage. There's a sizable hole that they're now uh, basically off between the guard and the tackle off the right side. They found a soft spot in uh, the defense to start it. Second and ten coming up here for the Farmers. Regain loss on the penalty. Going to roll under seven minutes on this play right here. Very simple. Talked about on Elwood Renfield's offense. The Farmers isn't really that fancy as well. Skaggs in the backfield. Ben. Going to be the second back goes left side. I believe that's Jefferson for nothing. Yeah, that was stood up right at the beginning. Uh, the part, uh, home with uh, Springfield defensive line just stood that up from guard to guard. There was a place to go, and there was ample room for linebackers to flow and make the play, and that's what they did. If you're just tuning in, and 14 to 6, the Farmers on top of the end of Springfield Trojans here at home in Farmington. A beautiful day of football. And almost 60 degrees, but then you've got the 15-mile-an-hour wind from the west pulling everything down. So, third and eight coming up for the Farmers. Same set again. Van goes in motion. That's Elam. He comes towards us. Skags up the middle and stuffed by the secondary. First on that tackle was Mark Marlott again. Even though, you know, most people say, gee, we have third and eight. Why aren't you throwing the I think that's well played by Farmington. Give the ball to Skags. You never know. You could always break one. Um, safe. Uh, you play a little ball control here. You kick it back, and now Skags isn't punting. So, I just Kind of uh, musical chairs of kicking and punching today. Sanford is back, and he's going to watch about the same position here, John. Snap wide. He gets it, and it's going to be a line drive kick, and it rolls out at the 39-yard line. It was a bad snap, but he grabbed it and booted it for not very many yards. Well, it looked like he had one thing on his mind. Don't drop it and get that thing out. Play a little hot potato with that. So I think he wanted to get out as fast as he could. Now, the case gags must have enough wrong with him. Hunting hurts his knee. Uh, that's going to be something that will probably factor into Elwood Brimfield's play calling as we go. You know, Farmington's not much of a threat to punt. Uh, you know, that changes how the game gets called. So now the Elmwood Brimfield will come up to the line with good field position yet. And again, they couldn't score last time they had this straight a field position. The run to the outside, McCoy. He goes right side, and he'll get a short gain of roughly three yards. For a second there. For more than a second, to be honest with you, I thought maybe he was going to throw that ball. That was he ran flat for a very long time, but he turned it upfield. Uh, if they had decided to pull up and throw that ball, if there's somebody to leap through, all the defenders are close to the ball. Uh, that could be an effective play later in the game. Second and eight, five thirteen left in the third quarter. The Farmers still have the lead. McCormick's going to roll towards up on the pass. Looks all the way down the field. Now Wyatt. And overthrows Wyatt. He got the wind killed that one. He's rolling left side blocker hash and to turn around. Yeah, that uh, definitely was a wind deflected pass because the ball was on line. And Wyatt, who was behind the defender, Super Eagle, was trying to keep up, but that wind gusted it back uh, over the shoulder of Wyatt. So Farmington is very fortunate that uh, Elmo did not score there. Jason, as they're setting this one up here, uh, the ball it back. Can you feel it down there on the ground? Is the wind really playing havoc? Is that why it shut down McCormick passing? No, I don't I don't think the, the wind's bad down here on the field, per se. Up in the booth, it might be, but it's tough for a quarterback to roll off to his left and throw back to his right side. Exactly. Wyatt's going to come towards the first one tackle. He finally wraps up. Graham gets the tackle at the 40-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth and long. But Alex Higgs, the name we haven't really called much. We called a lot during the year, but Alex Higgs is the one that came out and really forced that to come back up inside. Even though he didn't get the tax, he did stop forward progress. Okay, what do we got here, Coach? I'm punting. 
And I'm finding if I'm can try to pin Farmington down, and if Farmington can't punch, if you can keep it on this side of the field, eventually you're going to score. That's, that would be the belief uh, of Elmer Grimthaw, I'm sure. So now the punter will be standing at their 48-yard line. The ball is at the Farmer's 40-yard line. Fourth and 11. Ice snap. Almost blocked. That's going to roll out. Actually, it's going to bounce, bounce, bounce. Finally go out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Kyle Harmon and Higgs real close on the block. Yeah, they definitely didn't want to scruff the kicker on that. They were wise to pull up. And, uh, you know, once again, I think uh, Griffith made the absolute right call there. You want to just play field possession right now. And, it, and if uh, Farmington, as I said, if can't punt, that could be a huge, huge turn of, of events here. So you look at it, John. They started on the 18 and the 8 and they scored time. Yeah. Go so set it on the one-yard line and we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Farmington, uh, ironically, had one that with his pin. First and 10 for the Farmers at the 15-yard line. It's going to be Blonde. He's coming. He came out of the far side. He's still on the feet. Flag, flag. from the field. And he goes down awkwardly. Hopefully he's okay. Yep, he's shuffling his feet at around the 4-yard line. And it's typically those types of flags are on offensive line holding penalties or something like that. But they Coming towards us for the... They're table. walking backwards. Yep. And Jason actually looks like we've got a holding penalty down on the field. Still waiting for the signal, and they're talking to the field. What you see down on the field? And actually, the official, uh, when he held over Coach Mark, was on ACAC 20, is who they called that on. There you go. ACAC gets the penalty. So they're going to come back. up first and very, very long. Down. This is just what Elmwood Grantfield would have wanted. So, uh, this is uh, uh, playing right into their hands right now. So now the ball will be at the 7 yard line on the 10 yard penalty. Looks like two men in motion close again, John. Nonetheless, it's going to go left side. And I believe that is. Good job. Yep. Game. Yeah, there was a positive yard for Farmington, but not much. They ran. Uh, or they, they ran the far side tailback towards us, and the near side tailback ran against the corner to the pulling guard in front of him. But uh, Elmer Grimfield stayed at home, did a good job, kept it to a short game. 3.30 here in the third quarter. It's 14 to 6. The Farmers on top of the Elmwood Grimfield Trojans here in a class matchup in round two of the high school playoffs. It's going to be a pitch. It's going to be Skag. He had one and he's wrapped up and stood up by number 54, Brian Gillis. Oh, uh, Brian Gillis really did a yeoman job there on that. As he fought through about three blocks and stood up in case Gag he had a team. So well played by Brian Gillis on that. Stop a lot of forward progress, even though Farmington picked a few yards. Third and seven coming up for the Farmer. The back up deep in their own territory with 250 left in the third. Bologna comes out. Looks like he's healthy, so it's a play selection call here. It'll be Jeff, and he goes left side. Up on his feet, and finally wrapped up by Ryan Necker. He gets the first down. And uh, Ryan Necker's not there. That's what set the touchdown. Jake Jefferson got through where everybody was focusing on the case tag. A little curiously, I would say, because that doesn't seem like that would be the place he would hit the ball. Uh, but effective fake on the part of Farmington and, and uh, Jeff. Had a, a lot of running room out there and was able to get a first down. So a little different look by bringing Bolania off. And he is still on the sideline. He's right next to Coach Martin. I think he's taking on his ear a little bit. He wants back in. Welker's going to keep the ball. He goes left side and spins around and maybe gets. That looks like a broken play. It uh, didn't seem like that was a bootleg. It looked like there might have been a miscommunication or something. Farmington's lucky to get positive yards on that play. 208 left in the third quarter. It's an eight-point lead for the Farmers. To start this second half, a punt that turns a big punt by the Farmers, then a punt by Elmwood. Farmington punted it away. Pardon me, Elmwood part, uh, punted it away, so it's just been no one can get anything offensively going in the second half. It's going to be a pitch toward Bologna. He's still on his feet, and he's wrapped up at the 40-yard line. Effective job of blocking there by the tackle, Matt Elliott. 
rolled around and was able to lead through the hole for uh, Bologna and got uh, Bologna down the field and took care of a couple of would-be defenders for uh, Elmwood Burfield, leaving a third and very maple two and a half maple So a timeout for an injured player down on the field and trying to get the jersey up. So now Coach Martin's going to have a chance to talk about this one. And Jason, did you see who, which player went down and what happened? That's Marlon, and it looks just to be like a left calf cramp. John, real quickly, your play that you thought was a busted play that Welker took around the left end, that's actually a design play. Coach Martin on the sideline, in between possessions, has been telling the Welker, carry out his fake so he can sell it. It's, they're trying to set that play up to get Welker on the edge. There you go, a little inside boot. And that's what it looks like, John, up here in the boot. And, you know, the uh, guy looks like a broken play, so but it hasn't really uh, paid dividends. So. Yeah, it just didn't seem like it flowed. I was curious. Uh, it was a, pl a planned bootleg, but it just did not appear to be one. So third and three coming up for the players. Off of the makeshift official timeout. That's going to be a push up the middle. And where that helmet is, it looks like it's got the first down. Yeah, it looked like the official spotting that. I, it, they weren't a little bit of an angle. Oh, they're waving it forward. It is a first down. So just like that, Welker just keeps with himself, and he actually didn't have much in front of him. He was actually a side tackle rather than any uh, forward motion. Well, if Marlott's not in the game, I would not be surprised if they run right at where he was. First and ten for the Farmers. The ball at the 43-yard line. Minute left in the third quarter. It's coming our way with Kanye. He runs almost on the ground for about four yards there. Well, and his, uh, his wing back mate, Jake Jepson, made a very good on uh, Sonny Vizioni there uh, that really got Bologna down the field. Small school football is usually pretty simple. You run the ball, and that's exactly what we've got here tonight. The Farmers have a few more numbers that we've called in the Trojans. Second and a long four. And left side, holds a couple of defenders to the 45. Novak was one of those, and he took off with him. Well, and that'll likely be the last play of the third quarter as Farmington's going to want to just go into the fourth quarter with a, with a lead in a first down. That's a great time for them to just let the play clock run down. Although, maybe they're just going to feel like they've got it because they're coming back up to the line ready to run another play. The clock stops the second game, so at the same time, with 12 seconds left and the new set of downs, they will run it. It's going to be Skag and might shuffle for half a yard, if that. Yeah, there's not much going on on that play. Not going on. It looks like people are still fighting each other. Now. It was an Elmwood Burnfield Trojan tripping up over another one. Nothing to talk about. That's the end of the third quarter. It's 14 to 6. We're going to come back with the last quarter of the day here in 60 seconds here on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Spooner Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor, leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Back, everybody, in Farmington. It's 14 to 6. The farmers on top of the M. with Brimfield Trojans. They have second and 10 Trojan territory at the 45-yard line. The line that goes in motion to the far line, which is the right side now, because they're moving from... that the blow blue. Oh, they blew it dead. They blew it dead. So they're going to blow that one dead. Coach Hollis... I don't know, he's kind of got that long stride going like he's not happy with the call. How it happened is he rolled to the right side at about the 45-yard line. The ball did come loose, but it looked like he was hit down at about 
the 45 yard line. Yeah, it looked like the right ball. It looked like the one just needs to down on the ground before the ball came out. So the Farmers breathe a sigh of relief. They've got third and 10 coming up from the exact same spot. No gain on that by Bologna. We do have a scoring update from the Mercer County Rock Ridge game right after the play. Third and 10 coming up. Skag in the backfield, two in, set back. Bologna, same motion again. He had a defender right on him. Walker takes it himself. Is he going to have it for the first down? He's still on his feet. 25, the 20 yard line with three white jerseys wrapped up around him for 20 yards. Sometimes football is a game of inches, Dakota. There was a defender, and I, it was happening so fast I didn't see who it was. But he absolutely was not fooled by that bootleg, and he was ready to, to uh, tackle uh, Welker two yards deep in the backfield, and Welker got past him. And after that, there was a lot of really good blocking downfield for Farmers. Welker really took uh, the last seven yards on his own effort. 10.58 left. Now Farmers have the ball first and 10 deep in the Trojan territory. Gags is going to roll the right side, get a few yards on that carry. Real quickly, that scoring update that I promised you, it is 6-6 six, six at the end of the third quarter. So 12 minutes left in the Rock Ridge Mercer County game. Or two exciting. A defensive battle. And it is 14-6 here, and the Farmers are driving. Well, this is the first time this year we have not called the case Gags name a lot. Now, we've called it quite a bit, but but uh, doing a lot of this without the case Gags. Gonna be a run to the left side. It was a face of Skag. Jepson upside down falls to the 10. You know, I was, I was talking to Roger Alvey, the superintendent of Elmwood, at half. I asked him what he thought, and he said, "Your team is very big, meaning Farmington, and uh, Farmington's uh, size seems to be uh, overwhelming at Elmwood Brimfield right now. Not that Elmwood Brimfield's small, but that." Size is really starting to, to take its toll on Elmwood Brimfield. 14-6, 10 minutes left in the ball game. And the Farmers have a new set of downs. It's first and goal. That's going to be back to he maybe fight for a couple of yards. Maybe a yard. Well, we said earlier, if Farmington has the lead going into the fourth quarter, you'd probably have a lot of that. But you, know, you really haven't seen a lot of McKay's game. You have to wonder what that injury's done. Brings up second and goal. The ball spotted on the seven-yard line. Nine three left in this ball game. Walker directly under center. Same formation again. Going to be a pitch to Jepson left side. Gets around the end, and we got a flag that comes from the near sideline. I really don't really know what that was. It's all right there, so you must see something. But I, I don't know what that is. Officials on Elmwood yeah. Brimfield, apparently. The line is clapping his hands very vigorously. One thing about this officiating crew, they take their time to make sure that they've got the, the right call. Yeah. Have a good, long discussion. Oh. oh well. Hey, that's going to be on Elmwood Brimfield Trojan. The key on that one, you're not going to get a lot of yards. They get the first down. The first down is a huge part of that penalty right there, Dakota. You're exactly right. As I said, I didn't see it, but there was an official right there that was throwing the flag, and I think it wasn't on the tackler. I think it was the block with Bologna, because that's where he was throwing the flag, near where there was a block going on. Well, they'll bring up first and goal yet again for the Farmers. You talk about the defensive stand here for the Trojans, but the Farmers have four opportunities to get this one in. And let's see if they can use it. The ball's up to three. And a gag. Does wow. anybody even touch the no, no, and, and, you know, we don't call a lot of offensive linemen's names. Brendan Joseph is the center for Farmington on that, and he cleared a path for a case gag, and, you know, I don't believe he was that. Marches that one in from three yards out, makes it a 20 to six ball game. The Farmers, you assume that they're going to send out the two-point crew because they can't kick the extra point. Well, and, and this would be a, a really, really big two-point conversion. It still would be a two-possession game. That's two possessions and two two point conversions you have to make. That's a lot of pressure on an opposing offense. Especially with only nine minutes left in this ball game. Hang goes in motion to Polanyi. Walker to himself. He's gonna go. He's gonna be just short. Oh, they give him a touchdown. And let's see here. No flag. Or pardon me, a two point conversion. No flag. It looked like he fell just short of the yellow line. 
But like we said, we're 50 yards away. Wow. Yeah, I would have said he didn't make it, but we're so far away from it. There must have been. He must have gotten the lead uh, on that play because I thought he was tackled about a half a yard short of the goal line. And I'm trying to find our man down on the sideline, Jason Rockwell. I see him on the far side. Ken, Jason, you probably had a good look at that. What a play. And uh, gets it in there, makes it 22 to 6. What do you see on that two-point conversion? Walker, Walker broke the plane as, as he was coming down. The ball crossed. The ball actually on the, on the side of the goal line. The uh, penalty that you were in reference to, the personal foul, was on number 56. That's Matt Hanley. So that penalty was on him. Costly penalty. He was still arguing with the official not reset when that play ran in right past him when McKay's gag scored. Oh, there you go. Live Jason on the far sideline. A little harder to hear him on the far sideline um, than it is here on the near of the farmers 22 to 6 we've had a whale of a ball game so far now you're on with the field you're down two score two two-point conversions you got to go all out on offense now he's out throwing the ball uh i mean because they're going to wait for that if the farming is going to wait for that same play uh that resulted in the, the two long games that elmwood brimfield had so you, you're probably not going to be able to go to well right now you're going to need to try to throw the ball and it's going to be tough to do but that's the that's the task in front of well, John, if you look at the last two scores, it was Skaggs on the touchdown, Welker on the two-point conversion. And Welker does have a touchdown round as well to start this ball game. The ball is loose. It looks like Elon might have fallen on it for the Farmers. Oh, oh man. No, I think, I think somebody in Melwood Brimfield may have gotten it because Elon was getting off the pile. Now there's people pushing and pulling. I think based on the, the reaction, the Elmwood Brimfield recovered. So what happened on that? It was a Nick James at the kick. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Touched by Bowers. Hit the ground. Elam swung in from the left side. Missed it. And then it was just a crook, but we have no idea what happened from there. Well, and believe me, I've been as a player many years ago under the pile. The ball can change hands many times. That's why officials try to get it cleared up as much as they can, as soon as they can, because people are fighting for that ball. So, 9.09 left here. Elmwood Brimfield Trojans, they've got to score twice and do it with only nine minutes left on the clock. It is 22 to six here in Farmington. They're on CD Country 107.9. Look at that bunch set for the Trojans. They're gonna run one right up the middle and maybe a game of three. Well, and I, uh, it's working very well for Farmington. I'm going to but I'm a little surprised that the safety's playing up as far as they are. With this 16 point lead, you think they'd back off and just try to keep everything in and not a prevent necessarily, but you want to make sure they have the proper angle to case somebody breaks through. Another run, and that's going to be a quick run right up the middle. It looks like it's falling apart in the backfield, but just shoots through for a gain of around six. I mean, that was Schoenberger who really came through and was giving everything he had, and uh, Farmington defenders were able to stop before he got a first down. Third and two coming up for the Trojans. We're going to roll close to eight minutes on this play. The run. That's from, get past the first down marker, so it should be plenty for a first down. Wow, that was a, a lot of forward progress on the part of Elmwood Brimfield's line. They're showing a lot of urgency right now as they know they need to get a point and they need to get it quickly. Quick update from the Bridge game. It is 6-6 with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Mercer County has the ball. So it's tied up with eight minutes left, and Mercer County driving. Run left side. Still on his feet and taken down on the far sideline of that Skag who wraps up Wyatt's eight-yard carry. Well, you're going to see a lot of Wyatt, I would guess, just because he, he has a lot of speed. He's the one that can break a long one, whether it's uh, by pass or by run. 8.07 left on the clock. The ball is now in Farmer's territory at the 46-yard line. A pitch to the back. Gets... Three yards, going to be short on the first down. Well, not that Farmington's defense is ever going to let them score. Don't get a mistake what I'm about to say. But Farmington would be very content to see Elmwood take 12, 13 plays to score because the time is their enemy now. They don't just have Farmington as their opponent. They also have the clock. 7.43 left on the clock in this ball game. Third and one. And again, the line just pushes enough forward, and that's going to be a first down for the Trojans. Now we'll stop briefly, but Elmwood Brimfield's going to need to get right back up to the line. It's been a blast 
so far today in this Prairie Land Blue Makeshift Conference Championship game, and the winner moves on to play Rockridge or Mercer County. That game is close to a final. And there's a left side run. That's Wyatt. He's wrapped up and takes out a few players on the far sideline. As I said, they need to have the defenders, the safeties, back far enough to take the proper angle. If Wyatt gets around the corner, they need to be able to push him out of bounds or drag him down. And even better for Farmington is to drag him out before he goes out of bounds so the clock doesn't stop. 7.27 left on the clock. And this methodical drive by the Trojans is able to march it down. Now they have the ball at the 29-yard line. So the pitch, man back to left McCoy, and he stood up at the line on a short game. Farmington's playing some defenders in and out, looking like they're trying to keep fresh legs in there, uh, and uh, that looks to pay some dividends there. Some tired defensive linemen came off, and some fresh defensive linemen came on. Run to the left side. I believe that was Wyatt, was it, Jeff? Yeah, I, I believe it was Wyatt. Look, I, I almost thought there was a fumble. There was something that wasn't quite right on that. Elmwood Brim usually was pretty crisp as the ball was changed, and that time there was definitely something amiss on that exchange. 6.51 left on the clock. Third and eight coming up for the Trojans. We've got a time down on the field. That's going to be Coach Hollis. We're no, that looks like a farmer. farmer. The farmers take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds right after this. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V. Your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Old Field Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning. Everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back, everybody, here in Farmington. And a scoring update from the Mercer County game, 12-6. to 6. Rock Ridge is on top of Mercer County with six minutes left. And according to my update, Mercer County has the ball again. Like I said that last time, but Rock Ridge scores. 6.44 left in our ball game. It's 22-6. to 6. Farmers on top. Okay, here we go. Third and eight. The Trojans have it in Farmer's territory. McCormick rolls the left, throws it downfield. He's got an open receiver, and he runs out of bounds. And who was that? That was number 24, Grant Stevens. Nobody on top of him. Well, that's the, that's the play they haven't run. And uh, they, so they pulled something a little wrinkle. And that was a crucial, crucial pickup for, for Elmwood Grimfield because they were looking at fourth and fourth down the first there. 6.38. Again, the clock will stop. This one is a run up the middle for a short game, but this time the clock will continue to roll. And McCoy had a little, had a little bit of running room there as he cut back to the left. Uh, Farmington was able to close that hole. Right now he's got the ball uh, on the four-yard line. Uh, let's get in here, hopefully for Elmo Grimfield pretty quickly. A run almost the exact same path again for the same result. That's going to bring up third and go. Third and uh, looks like the ball is on the one, the two, uh, depending on where that uh, that is spotted. So um, you know, they've got to get it in quickly because the time just keeps running off. A run up the middle again. I think 
No, somehow oh. he comes out of the bottom of the pile. Now, are they going to mark him down before he comes okay. through? No. Arms are up. A signal for the touchdown spins around. Jason, real quickly, we're going to send it down to you. It looks like he was down, but somehow he just explodes out of the bottom of the pile. Yeah, Vizioni did not quit there. He kept the legs going, and they did not blow the whistle for forward progress. And as you saw from the booth, he turned, and, and the ball did break the plane from, from down here at my angle. So, make it 22 to 12, two-point conversion. It's not like it's just a whole hump. We need this. You've got to have it. If you don't get it, you're still two, you're still two possessions down, and that, you know, it was 547 left in the game. This is as important a play as Brentfield's had all year. 22 to 12. They go to the line, for, and the fans know. You can hear the fans. They know how important it is. It's going to be a pass. Rolls left side. And it was intercepted, intercepted by the farmer. So the two-point conversion is no good. The fans didn't even know what happened. We couldn't see where the ball was. It was dead silence. And it was an interception by the farmer. So the two-point conversion is no good. Takes it 22 to 12. And, John, you brought up that crucial point. Now he's scoring get two points. You've still got to do it one more time. Yeah, well, now I think you, you basically have to kick on side at this point. And uh, Farming is going to know that, of course. But you know, it's right now, Elma Brimfield has to get the ball back because even if they get it back now, they still have to score. And then it doesn't really matter if they get the two or not. But then they have to get the ball back again. So this is a huge, huge kickoff now uh, because they're going to have to get this ball. If Farming can get it, Elma's either going to have to start thinking about taking timeout or they're going to have to try to create a turnover or something big. And Jason down there on the field, we've seen a, a quick change right now. And are you feeling any sense of change? Is the momentum gone? What's down with Broomfield thinking? No, I don't think the, I don't think the momentum's gone. And I don't know that they necessarily have to do the onside kick. One thing to watch when we were in pregame, Brady Case, he was kicking him and making him from 30 to 35. So they do still have to, they don't necessarily have to score two touchdowns. There you go. Um, so the big, big thing coming up here, if they score, depends on what we do here. The Farmers ready for the kickoff. John, you look for a formation that's set up for an onside kick. It looks like they're going to go ahead and kick it away. Good job by the Farmers. Just a fall on that one. It landed at the 40-yard line in Farmers' territory. And that Farmer, who was that? That was uh, Harmon. Believe that's Coach Martinez. Or Cody Martinez. There we go. He just falls on it and lays on it. He's happy to just drive. Okay. Well, and you know, I'm wrong there. I, if, you know, put the coach hat on. I, I would have kicked on on side just because. It's a game of possessions now, and uh, you know, if you, you know, you're going to be lucky to get two more possessions if you're Elmwood Brimfield. So, we set it up, 5.45 left in the ball game. It's 22 to 12, so it's a 10-point ball game. The Farmers on top. A run, and it just keeps on pushing the pile, and that's McKay's gag coming out of the bottom. You know, this is the point in time where Elmwood just say, I'm going to point to McKay's gag and go, you know what, I'm giving it to him every time. Figure out where I'm giving it to him. Try to stop it. And this is the great part about all these ball games. You play the chess match. Now you know if you think Coach Hollis is going to go right at McKay's gag, you pull a different play out of the playbook if you're Coach Hollis. So it's just always the thought process you could have. Well, it's, it's about what hole you pick. They've developed plays where Skag can get the, get the ball off tackle, on a trap, up the middle. And at the end of that play, oh, the ball on the ground. Welker picks it up, gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Bad exchange center to QB. Wow. That's, uh, that's something you don't uh, want to have happen, obviously, if you're Farmington. That's uh, a huge, huge benefit right now for Elmwood Brinfield that it's third and short. But, boy, if they'd recovered a fumble there, that would have changed the complexion of the game. 4.43 left on the clock in this ball game. It's third and two coming up. The Farmers come to the line. The ball is at the 49-yard line, still in Farmers' territory. They need two and a half to pick up the first down. A big third down opportunity here for the Trojans to stop us. A long, hard count here, and they go to the third count, and then he walks it through. Dag gets the first down on about a five-yard carry. You know, that's about as late as you can have it for Farmington. As they show a lot of composure. They stay down in their ready pants and wait until that clock runs down as far as it can. Then you give it to Skaggs, he gets enough for a first down, and now you get four more downs. And at this point, as long as Farmington doesn't lose yards, they may just take all four downs now to try to go. Four minutes left on the clock, first and ten coming up. Again, it's 22 to 12. 
in your post-game show coming up. We're going to send it down to Jason. Hopefully he can grab the winning coach for a quick interview. But we'll play it by ear, and we'll keep you updated on that Rock Creek Mercer County score. Run to the left side, and ball does look like it came loose. Jepson went down awkwardly as he rolled over a defender. Yeah, they're indicating second down, uh, so it's, uh, even if the ball is loose, I don't know what really happened, but uh, the officials aren't buying it. So that run brings up second and ten for the Farmers. Three and a half minutes left here, folks. So the Trojans have, a, I believe, two timeouts left, or do they have the whole I think they have all three, don't they? Nonetheless, it's second and ten. They got to stop the ball. 3.20. Farmers come to the line. And how many times on this drive have we seen the Farmers use the entire play clock before they get it on? Oh, that's what they need to be doing. Look at this. Hard count. They're going They're going to watch the guy in the backfield until he puts his arms up. Look at Welker. Walks on. Nathan sends his hand in motion. Two counts later, Jepson, left side. Still on his feet. Needs to stay in bounds. And he runs out of bounds. At the... Was he at the 40-yard line, short of the first down? Yeah, he did want to stay in bounds. He was trying to, but he just ran out of real estate there. Uh, Elmwood Brimfield, of course, was doing their best to make sure he got out of bounds. So uh, picking up uh, about six yards on that play, maybe. So, uh, you know, it's a third and uh, maybe four. Okay, third and four coming up. The clock does stop because he's run out of bounds with 254 left. And now, John, you pick up the four yards. You don't have to worry about it. You get the first down. And then you really push the Trojan squad They're almost out of time. And you can almost look at this as two-down territory for Farmington. So if they only get two yards here, I think they're okay with that. Gags in the backfield, two in. It's going to be that man. He chugs it to the 35, depending on the spot. They are right on the marker. And I'm looking down at Jason, our man on the ground. He's signaling that's going the other yeah, way. The you chains are moving. Okay. Skaggs just took two defenders with him. I think he just said, you know what, guys? It's time to climb on my back, and I'm going to take this where we need it to go. Okay, Skaggs, he is the man that you want to have the ball. And he just runs it right at you, and he burns clock, and he always gets four or five yards, even if he has contact at the line. Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, as I said before, I think you may see him just get the ball the whole rest of the game. I don't know. First and ten, there are three seconds left on the play clock. They get it off with two left. Gags. He goes to the 30, to the 28, on an eight-yard carry. And now, if you're Elmwood Brimfield, you have to start burning some time out because you can't wait until you're on offense. This, this clock is going to be your absolute enemy. So if they stop them here on second down and they take the third, they're going to have to call a timeout, I think. you got to love it. With Unison, the Farmers squad below us, the fan, they look to the left. The minute the play is dead, you watch all their heads move to the right to look at the scoreboard. Well, everybody in knows. Unison. Everybody knows. That's all that's left here. 152 left. Second and four coming up for the Farmers. Three seconds left. There they go. They run it. Tag pushing to the 20-yard line, or pardon me, the 25-yard line. I think that's enough for the first down. It is right at it. You know, it's going to depend on the spot. Well, uh, I think that's the first down. They think old first down. They're moving the chain. Yeah. So with a minute 40 left, and you see a steady stream of black and orange heading to the parking lot. The clock rolls. A minute 38. It looks like the Trojan season is coming to an end here. But you have hats off to farming to farmers. They just found a way to win this ball game. Well, it's been a very well played game on both sides. You're exactly right. They found a way. So now, still time left on the clock. Signal from the official. It's going to be a left side run. Skag, hold on to that football. He's still got it. He just two arms wrapped around and takes it to the ground. Well, and uh, you know, it's easy for me to double to uh, second guess up here. So don't get me wrong, but I'm I'm really wondering why they're not calling timeout right now. They have their full confidence in timeout, but it uh, it looks like maybe Elmwood Brinfield's resigned to their fate. The last time the Farmers had a round two ball game was about five, six years ago. Orion here, the close game of the first half, and Orion ran away, disappointing this home crowd. But tonight, or today, this afternoon, the Farmer crowd very happy with the third round matchup. Tag, left side, still on the feet. He's going to take that ball down to the 15 yard line with 29 seconds left. And that should do it once they set this one down. Well, the last time Farmington was in the uh, 
quarterfinals, I believe, was 1987, where they faced the Rock Ridge Rockets. And we'll get you that score as quickly as we can. 15 seconds left. They shouldn't have to run another play when they set that ball down. The official's saying, yep, that's going to be good enough. Six seconds left. The Farmington Farmers are moving on to the third round of the 2A playoffs. So we've got a, a happy purple and gold standing below us. And on the far sideline, the black and orange. These two just match up beautifully against each other. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, both teams are very, very uh, well uh, schooled in how to stop people from running, are very well schooled in how to run. Uh, this is uh, a, a tremendous matchup for the second round. Uh, great environment here for these young men today. And uh, the Farmington faithful get to go home very happy, but the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans have absolutely nothing to hang their heads about. They gave it everything they had. They just came up short today. We are going to keep a close eye down on the field. Jason Rockhold, DJ Stone trying to wrangle Coach Mart, the winning coach today. We're going to gra try to grab a interview real quickly. The officials being thanked by Eric Matthews, the AD, ran a good tight ship here today. So hats off to him and thanks for him uh, joining us on the pregame show uh, earlier in today's broadcast. So the Trojans and Farmers shaking hands at midfield. We're going to start our... Our postgame show brought to you by Spoon River Electric Cooperative, your touchstone energy cooperative, providing power to our customers in Fulton, Knox, the son of Schuyler, and Peoria County. Real quickly, John, I've got a scoring update. It's 12-12 wow. in the Rock Ridge Mercer County game with a minute 15 left in that ball game. Doesn't matter. The Farmers are going on the road. They're going to Alito or they're going up to uh, Edgington. There you go. And... That's an old Olympic conference, both of those teams from the old Olympic conference. Yep. Down on the ground, it looks like we've got Jason Rockhold is still waiting for Coach Martin to come out of the pile. Happy group of coaches. B.J. Stone wrangling in Coach Martin. He is happy giving hugs out to anybody that walks by. He's ecstatic for a round three matchup. He's going to address his players, I believe, here in a second. And there, Coach Martin and Eric Matthews give a little hug. We're going to take a quick 60-second timeout. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll be back 30 seconds here on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor, leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Okay, welcome back, everybody, here in Farmington. The Farmington Farmers victorious. They move on to the third round, and we will update you on that final four if we do have it. Mercer County and Rock Ridge tied up at 12, with just a minute and a half left. So a good ball game here, a good ball game there. So we only know. We know that it's going to be a road game for the Farmington Farmers. And we are going to send it down here to the field in just a second. Jason Rockhold is with a victorious coach. Jason, what do you got? Congratulations, Coach Martin. Big win. You don't know who you're going to play next week. It's 12-12 with a minute left. You've got to be ecstatic after this game. Yeah, you know, right now, I don't care who we play next week. You know, I mean, it's a uh, quarterfinal. I mean, it's only been done once in school history. These kids won two playoff games. I mean, our kids play great. Like I told you at halftime, it was a game of momentum, and I felt like, you know, the third quarter of that last drive we had where we, it was a long drive, we sustained it, and we scored. I thought that was huge. 
How much credit do you give your offensive line to this game? They dominated basically from start to finish and allowed you to have what you just referenced there, that eight, nine-minute drive in the third quarter, start the fourth quarter. You know, I, a lot of the credit. I mean, they're great guys. They don't get a lot of the glory, but they work hard. They're physical. And our backs are in hard. But, you know, it starts. I said it all along. Who wins on both sides of the line of scrimmage? And, and I'm really proud of our offense and defense the line. Congratulations, Coach. Good luck next week in the playoffs. We'll be there. Back up to you, Dakota. Always nice when a former player interviews me. Rocky. <laughs> there you go. Jason Rockhold and Coach Martin having a blast. John, we witnessed a great football game. We're going to have to take a quick timeout. We've got plenty of sponsors that we need to get in. We're going to have BJ, Jason, you and me. We're going to break down what we've seen, and we'll get to the update from the Rock Pitch game. So we're going to take a 60-second timeout. We'll be back on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V. Your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning. Everything we touch turns to clean. By Ipava State Bank, with locations in Astoria, Ipava, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make Him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Everybody, your post-game show brought to you by Spoon River Electric Cooperative, your touchstone energy cooperative, providing power to our customers in Fulton, Knox, McDonough, Skyler, and Peoria counties. If you're just tuning in, a farmer is victorious, 22 to 12, over the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. A happy Coach Barton, and the update that we've got so far, there's 19 seconds left in that Rock Ridge Mercer County game, and it's knotted up at 12. So John, it looks like that one might go to overtime which bodes well for the farmer squad. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're going to get a little bit more tape to, to look at, too, because you're going to see every special play they probably have on either side. Uh, but uh, I'm sure Coach Martin meant exactly what he said. He doesn't care right now who won that game. That's right. Farmington's in the quarterfinals for only the second time in the school's history. A lot of ecstatic people in the Farmington squad, and then we're going to take a we'll see, break down everything that we've got left here. Quick. Scoring recap, 334 yards on the ground for the Farmers, 126 by Bologna, 100 by Skag, he had 25 in the end of the first half. On the other side of the ball, 202 yards total offense for the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. The big thing is no one fumbled or threw an interception. There are a couple of turnover on downs, but other, otherwise they played it pretty clean. Yeah, you know, the one that was almost a quasi-turnover was that, that uh, box punt but really didn't turn into anything. That's not technically a turnover, but, uh, it, you know, Farmington's defense stiffened, and that didn't result in any points for Elmwood Brimfield. And, uh, you know, it was played pretty straight up. There wasn't a lot of, you know, the one really big play was Wyatt breaking that long touchdown, and you had uh, Bologna with the, the one 40-yard run. But uh, it was just, uh, it was kind of funny at the beginning of the game. They said the middle of the field was kind of soft and spongy. Well, almost the entire game was played in between the hash marks and it was just a knockdown drag out fight and that will favor Farmington because they are a big physical team. Not that Elmwood Brimfield's not big and physical but Farmington's just a little bit bigger and that's going to favor them. There you go. We're going to take another quick timeout and we're going to give the uh, big hit of the game and everything like that but this is your post game show brought to you by Spoon River Electric Cooperative, your touchstone energy cooperative providing power to our customers in Holt, Knox, McDonough. Skyler in Peoria County. We'll be back in two minutes here on City Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Spoon River Animal Clinic. Comprehensive care when it's needed most. 
By CD Country 107.9, your new home in the country. By the Bank of Farmington, with locations in Farmington and in Canton. The Clayburg Fulton County Nursing Center, serving Fulton County since 1969. By Dempster Insurance Agency, located in Farmington and in Peoria, service beyond the contract. Spoon River Home Health, and by Quality Disposal and Quality Roll-Off. By Modern Health Fitness Center, located on East Chestnut Street, on the east side of Canton. By Sherry DeLost, your local real estate agent from Jim Maloof Realtor leading the way. By Spoon River Hearing Services, located inside the Graham Medical Building. By Wesley United Methodist Church, to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back, everybody, here in Farmington. 22 to 12, the farmers victorious. The farmers will hit the road no matter what happens in that Rockbridge-Mercer County game because they've hosted two and Mercer County. Or see, they've got a home game today, and Rockbridge played a home game in week one. So right now, the score is still 12-12, according to our update, with four seconds left in the ball game. So I don't know if it's close down the goal line or what we've got. Um... John, in that ball game, I just think Farmington had the heart. They had the intensity. They had what it took to win this postseason ball game. Well, and, and uh, you know, this is a senior-laden team for Farmington. This is a team that they've known for you know several years. That they were pointing to this season, and uh, you know, not that the, the juniors and the sophomores don't think the next year will be successful as well. But you've had these, these young men together for a very long time, so they know each other well. They know what they can do. They know what they can't do. And they stayed within themselves. That was something we really didn't talk about much. But they stayed within themselves. They did what they do. They didn't try to be something they're not. And uh, and really just uh, took control of the line of scrimmage when they needed to. Real quickly, our big hit of the game, which is always brought to you by Fairview Quick Stop Regina's Pizzeria, Route 97 in Fairview. Stop in for a grab-and-go sandwich or a frozen Regina's Pizza to bake at home. I'm going to mix it up a little bit, John. It was all hard-hitting, hard fought. I'm going to talk about the big stop of the game. It happened in the first half. It was a fourth down try by Elmwood Redfield. They are down, at, I think it was like the 12 or the 15-yard line deep in Farmer's territory. They stood them up, and offensively, ever since then, the Trojans just could not get it going. Yeah, they just uh, just seemed to always be just a, you know, a little short. And uh, that was a huge stop, even though it was all the way back in the first quarter. That was a huge stop for, for Farmington when Elmwood Brimfield looked like they were going into the score. So um, I agree with you. That was probably as important a stop as there was in the game. So that's going to do it for your big hit or big stop of the game brought to you by Fairview Quick Stop Regina's Pizzeria, Route 97 in Fairview. Stop in for a grab-and-go sandwich or a frozen Regina's pizza to bake at home. We're going to take one more time out, and then we're going to come in and wrap it up for you. We're going to hand out our look forward to the game. Hopefully we'll have a final score of that game. It looks like it's going to overtime in Rock Ridge or in Alito, the Mercer County Rock Ridge game. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back and we'll send you on your way for this Saturday. We'll be back in two minutes here on CD Country 107.9. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza, located on North 5th Avenue in Canton. By State Farm Insurance, your local agents, Chuck Taylor, Tom Conklin, Brian Yance, and D. Clark. By Innovations Design Academy, located on East Locust Street in Canton. By High V. Your employee-owned grocery store on North Main Street in Canton. By the Fulton County Farm Bureau, the voice of organized agriculture since 1916. By AM 1560 WBYS and simulcast at 93.7 FM. By Oldfield Bookkeeping and Tax Service, located on East 4th Street in Farmington. By Truman Cleaning, your residential and commercial cleaning. Everything we touch turns to clean. 
by IPAVA State Bank with locations in Astoria, IPAVA, Lewistown, and Canton. By Wesley United Methodist Church to know Christ and to make him known. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, if you're looking at getting married, give us a call. Welcome back, everybody, here in Farmington. Going to wrap up a happy day at Farmington. They're going to hit the road next week. we got to go to Rock Ridge. we got to go to Mercer County. We're going to overtime, John. According to our update, 12-12 going to overtime. So Farmington's happy. Yep. So. Yeah, they know they're going on the road, and they know they're going northwest of here. So uh, those two districts run into each other. So, uh, um, you know, they're going up that way. They're either going to Rock Island County or they're going to Mercer County. So real quickly, the scores by... Farmington Skaggs had two touchdowns. Welker with a touchdown. He had two two-point conversions as well. Wyatt with a 61-yard run. If you take that one away, really, offensively, Elmer couldn't get anything going. And Vizioni scared the Farmington faithful there at the end by punching that one in. Made things a little closer. The clock was still running. And that made it 22-12. to They could not convert on the two-point conversion. All your in-game full board updates brought to you by Oak Pines Funeral Homes of Canton and Elmwood. Oak Pines is committed to giving you the highest level of service at your time of need. So sadly, we're not going to have the final from that game. So you're just going to have to stay tuned to the IHSA or find it somewhere, and you'll know where Farmington is going uh, next week. John, thoughts on what you've seen, and who does Farmington match up well against next week? Do they match up well? Do, where do they want to travel? Yeah, well, I, you know, the coaches are just happy they're moving on. But, uh, you know, I can, uh, my opinion is I think Farmington would be much better served playing Rock Ridge. Uh, Mercer County likes to throw the ball uh, a lot. And uh, Farmington has not always demonstrated the greatest aptitude at stopping the pass. They're very good at stopping the run. You'd much rather see a run-heavy team than a pass-heavy team at this stage in the game. Um, you know, but I, I think the, the thing I'd like to sum up today is, first of all, Congratulations again for another uh, great season for Elmwood Brimfield. You know, that's just kind of old hat for them. They, they have great season after great season, so that's a credit to their coaching staff and their young men over there. And, uh, you know, as I said at the end of the game, nothing to be ashamed of for them. Uh, they just ran into a team that played, you know, they matched up favorably. You know, they uh, Farmington's 2-0 and against Elmwood this year, and, uh, you know, I think that, that – Farmington is the better team in all uh, all uh, honesty. That they they are just a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and uh, this is just their year. And uh, you know, whereas Farmington maybe didn't match up as well against Knoxville when they lost, and uh, Knoxville like, you know has a lot of speed. Uh, and uh, you know, teams that really just try to run smash mouth football, you know, Farmington will play those people all day long. And uh, Farmington really really is having a tremendous season. And uh, let's hope that they can continue it past next week. But we'll just be happy. Uh, for Farmington now to be able to go one week, one week longer. There you go. Well, for John Asplund, Dakota Horn, we had B.J. Stone, Jason Rockhold, Brian Wingo back in the studio. We've had a lot of fun. The Farmers advance. They win 22-12. to 12. Like you said, Elmwood Brimfield Trojans season ends today in Farmington. So keep you updated. Rock Ridge, Mercer County going to overtime. So that's where the Farmers are going, whoever wins that ball game. So once again, 22-12, to 12, the Farmers advance to the third round of the 2A playoffs. For everybody here on CD Country 107.9, for everybody back at home, thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks a lot, everybody.